We're back, episode 34 of the Knock Off Podcast. Oh, shit. Danny and Briss checking in on your little uh, Friday night atmosphere. Return guest for the evening, Knock Off Nation, semi-regular. Benny, what's up, my friend? How's it going, boys? Good to be back. Benjamin Franklin, how goes it? Oh, good week. It's been pretty good. <laughs> Still wearing the Queensland jersey. I'm not sure that would have even come off from Wednesday night. Yeah, not yet. It smells a little bit, but... Passion. It smells like victory. <laughs> but, been a big uh, week. Been a big week. Been a, or, origin fever in the... Uh, to kick the week off, but... Uh, for me, it's finished with, and I dare say all of us, with a fucking bad case of McGregor Mayweather mania. <laughs> Holy fuck. Like, how, like, as much as, you know, there's history to, to both guys and, and whatever side of the fence you stand on, you, these are two entertaining cats, man. Like, you got you got to love these guys and the banter that's being thrown. Like, two professional trash talkers. It's ridiculous. It's been fucking great. I, I've been addicted to it. I've, wa- I've watched basically every piece of content you can on this thing, but... And there's yep. people out there going, oh, geez, it's too WWE for me. It's like, no, it's not, because these two are fucking murderers. Like, yeah. both, and, the, both. and they're going to legit throw down. Exactly, exactly right. There's a, they're doing the thing to sell it, and it's, and it's working. But we've almost invented a new sport here this week in these press conferences where people are all of a sudden calling press conferences 10-9, 10-8, things like that. In that sort of technology, uh, that sort of analogy is where... We're referring to it like it's a sporting scorecard. Where yeah, they're giving out it boxing scores. It's precisely, where we go and go to day one. So they, they kick kick off the tour in Los Angeles. People are saying, "Oh, geez, send nine Mayweather after day one. He's won the essentially what is a rap battle format." Where it is, the, yeah. C- compared to the UFC, and where we see all of the the lead ups to the big UFC cards and pay per views, where the format with that for the people that haven't seen them is basically a desk format where people are standing uh, are sitting at these desks. And get asked individual questions by journalists. Yeah, like a media scrum type mm. situation. Whereas this is, you know, you get a, what do you reckon they get? Three, five, six minute speech? Yeah, between six to ten, yeah. maybe even by the end of it, because they have to wait for like the the crowd reaction and things like that. So yeah. it would be would be. And out. so they've done three stops in a row. Like, what do they do? Staples Center first. Well, yeah. Staples Center, Los Angeles, that was into a bit Toronto, mm. yeah, and and just today Brooklyn. in Brooklyn, Barclays Center. Yeah. Cute. And um, and Connor had had obviously coming from MMA had done the different style of press conference the whole time, so was kind of off guard in mm. in the LA one at the Cause Staples he, Center because he's zero and zero, <laughs> like he's never had to do it. It's crazy. Yeah, exactly. But um, but didn't didn't understand what he was in for. Like obviously nobody told him, hey, you have to get up and make a speech and shit like that. So he got up and basically on stage was given the microphone and like here say say your piece or whatever. And so he just you know was. Probably the most respectful that he's been out of out mm. of the three press conferences that they've had so far. He was talking about b- being a father that motivates him now, and you know it was mm. a big difference from what he was saying in the first press conference. And then he realised the format after what, what Floyd got on. Yeah, for. and so I'm totally foreign to the to the boxing uh, press con- conference format as well. But there's an A side and a B side, so I don't know how how that's determined. But Floyd Mayweather is the A side, which means that the B side has to say their speech first, and the A side gets to have a rebuttal to n- to no retort. So it's kind of like in in uh, Floyd's advantage, Connor not having you know any any reference of what's going on at this first press conference and saying his speech, and then Floyd gets up and gets the crowd involved and like gets all this different shit happening and. Um, and and Connor like doesn't get a chance to come back. So the um, Toronto one was obviously like huge Irish support in Toronto, and um, and Connor came with a whole performance for his speech and fucking, you know, it, he got what the format was. It was ridiculous. You're yeah, right, that's an MMA crowd. Yeah, they were chanting UFC, UFC, pay your taxes. Like you could hear yeah, them. Yeah, you could hear them. Huge, huge Connor like favorite at that crowd for sure. It's like a. If you haven't seen the videos, it's like a sports combat sports version of Eight Mile, where yeah. you're getting up and yeah. rap battling. And as you say, yesterday it felt like B Rabbit rocking up to the shelter for the first time, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit wary, hadn't choke, like, choke, well, yeah, yeah, choke. <laughs> yeah. It, it had that sort of shit going on. Now day two, as you say, he came out and there was things where his microphone had been cut off the previous day in day one in Los Angeles. Day two, he turns up, and the exec, one of the main. Ex- head executives for Showtime Sports, the production company there, Stephen Espinosa is this guy's name. He's sitting on a stool two seats down from Floyd Mayweather. Connor comes over 
cut my mic off, you fucking bitch, you fucking weasel. In this production <laughs> guy, like in the C- one of these CEOs' faces, <laughs> yeah. like yeah. he's not fighting him. It was it's unbelievable. But so he just came out and spat venom after that first day. And when we're talking about scoring it, they said Floyd because Connor was deer in the headlights a little bit in, on day one. So they ten nine to Floyd where. People are saying yesterday it could have even been a ten eight to Connor that he came back and just floored him. <laughs> like it's it's created a yeah. new sport this shit. And I, then we saw today's one was obviously like we were just discussing it before we recorded because Maddie hadn't actually seen the the one from today in um in Brooklyn. But we we were talking about how you know it's fucking three solid days of this intense tension that you're you're feeling this you know whether these guys touch or not it's obviously written into some sort of contract that they're not to touch at any given time or the fights off and whoever touches first forfeits their purse or something hundreds like, of mil on the line something has to be. like that has to be because these guys are showing fucking incredible restraint and like to imagine you know having these intense fucking arguments and sort of the stare downs that they have to do, like even though it's only 15 minutes, it's it's like psychological warfare, you know, and, and you would feel that in a physiological way after that. So you really saw today, I think, like that tension building up because it wasn't as jovial and as as sort of funny and stuff mm. as the other ones. It, mm. it came across as really aggressive. The tone was much more hostile. It's three straight days together and three straight days of travel as well. Yeah. Where they take a five-hour yeah. flight up into Canada. Not training. Take a, take a two-hour flight down like, travel into food. New York. Exactly right. All that sort of transition stuff. And they have to do it back-to-back so it doesn't interrupt training camp so much. So you could see that tension today where it's, shit, we've been at this three full days mm-hmm. now because the adrenaline Hard dump travel. of being up on stage there where... The, the energy that you're using and that social energy and everyone screaming at you, all the questions. Pressure to perform on top when, of all that. When, exactly right. Exactly. When you went when you went home to your hotel room after those days, I honestly think you'd be fucking exhausted. Ears ringing, just mm. body buzzing. And uh, jump on a plane for the next stop, the final leg of it, they're going over to Wembley Stadium, which will be just unbelievable in London. <sighs> that, that's where they had 90,000 people for Joshua Klitschko and... They'll, they'll get yeah. fucking maybe 40,000, 50,000 there for that. Imagine if they packed it out for a press conference. People it honestly wouldn't Island surprise if they did. Yeah. Anytime yeah. somebody says Wembley Stadium, I instantly think of the Guns N' Roses film clip to Paradise City. I think they released a live one. Right. Fucking insane, man. Like yeah. Axel Rose in like, you know, the height of his youth and, and drug taking and creative energy and shit and just... An insane amount of people. Kind of, kind of look down. like Axel Rose today. Yeah, hundred percent, man. And that's, and that's that's what we're we're seeing here is like entertainment, and and you know haters will will throw the WWE flag up and all that sort of stuff. And you know, as a kid, I fucking loved that mm. professional wrestling stuff for the entertainment aspect of it. And as an adult, I do, I don't obviously watch it, but I can appreciate it for what it is. And what it is is a quasi-athletic entertainment mm. activity, you know? That's and, thing. and that's kind of what we're seeing with this fight a little bit because at the end of the day, it's boxing. So it's not necessarily, you know, as Connor calls it, it's it's not even half a fight. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a quarter of a fight. I was listening to a podcast today where Rogan was saying, you know, give... Give Connor one other one other weapon. Give him elbows. Give him leg kicks. Give him just one other weapon. And Floyd is fucked, man. Like no no way can Floyd survive that kind of legitimate fight. I know? still think that Connor is going to come into this fight with some like uh, strengths from his MMA style. Like he's going to be so awkward how he moves. Like he might have a bit more distance or be in the pocket, but like the angles he can come up with so unorthodox. I just don't know how long it will take Floyd to kind of figure that out. Does he fight with his hands down a lot in, in MMA, Connor, at times where he has that sort of Irish boxer style? He does, man, yeah. That, I don't know if he can do that in, in boxing. Be int- I'm so intrigued to see how he comes out and looks. You As you say, you I, think he's gonna th- I think he's going to throw different looks, as Benny's saying. Two underhooks like, too. Like you can clinch in the boxing, so he might like throw him around just to let him know he's a little bitch. <laughs> 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 that yeah. press conference got me Con- juiced Con- up. Con is <laughs> <laughs> strong as fuck, man. Yeah. Like he, he's got that crazy power. And when he – there was a, a clip of da- that Dana White, I think, uploaded on his Instagram of – them basically squaring off and Connor's saying all sorts of shit at him, but he's saying my 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 shots fucking go through the guard. Like if, even if, even with your hands hands up, I can rock you and shit like mm. that. Which is what we've seen from his MMA fight. So if one of those lands, man, you know, the more I watch this, the more and and I was listening to a backstage um, media scrum with 
Len, Lena, Leonard Elurb. I'm not yeah. sure if that's how Leonard you pro- Elurbe, something like I'm that. I'm not sure yeah. if that's how you pronounce his name, but is he's the C- CEO of Mayweather um, Productions. And um, he's a fucking, I'm a fan. Yeah. I, I like that dude, man. He's he, funny. I've seen him before. He's hilarious. Isn't and he, he um, yeah, he's, he's got n- zero ill will towards Connor whatsoever. He's like, I like his swag. He got cold, he's got he's, cold swag. We see like, McGregor go up to him. He's like, oh, nice suit, Leonard. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's just this like old jovial black dude who knows that we are making a fuckload of money off of this. And you see what, what Floyd says in his speeches and shit. Like, yeah, I like that. I like that. That's fucking putting money in my account and shit. You guys are helping me. Right? <laughs> They're booing him and he's like, I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, the more I think about it and, and Leonard was saying that it's only the media that cares about this 50 and 0 record. Floyd doesn't give a fuck about his 49 and 0. And as in Floyd's words, it's all about money. You know what I'm saying? So I fucking, I'm starting to to believe this hype train that I think fucking Connor stops him here. I think Connor puts him out, man, and that's and that's 49 and one for Floyd boxing fight. But he goes out with the most ridiculous fucking payday mm, that big. surpasses um, Manny Pac- the Manny Pacquiao fight, which would arguably be the Highest biggest grossing, grossing fight of his Absolutely. is his career. Four point six yeah. mil was it? Uh, buys, yeah. yeah. This this does out does it? You reckon? 100% without a doubt. This is huge. This is the biggest be, sporting event I think of our lifetime so far. So far in ter- in terms of pay-per-view buys, yeah, it could it, it will easily hit 4 mil I dare say where every, everyone's going to see it even though if people think it's a mismatch they're still going to probably potentially buy it to yeah. to do that. E- every pub club in America or across Australia will have that. I'll buy yeah. it and even go watch it out. 100 bucks to, to watch it. Yeah, it would be very uh, it would just sell ridiculous after this sort of press tour as well. And the best mm. part is we they do this tour now. And there's, there's a month for everyone to cool their jets, so it just builds that hype even more where it's people still thinking about it for four weeks before it actually even happens. But I, a lesson I learned from watching the shit backstage, like you were saying, Dan, was uh, Floyd has picked... Uh, like it was Connor making reference to it, actually, where he said, why wouldn't he make me go lower in weight and suck it out of me? Like, w- why has he chosen 154 pounds where he knows I can cut to that weight and be... 168, 170 going to the ring that night when Floyd Floyd's walking around 154 pounds now. He's like thinking he, yeah, cardio. Yeah, That's yeah, what he, he's thinking. Gloves, he, though, yeah, right? It's the gloves. Yeah, absolutely. Where in Nevada, if you're 154 pounds, it's mandatory to wear 10 ounce gloves. Yeah. So, so he's Floyd's fought there gloves. once, hasn't he, against Oscar De La Hoya? Uh, in Vegas, oh, he's fought there fucking. At 154, I mean. Oh, okay. Uh, it's usually 147. Yeah, um, yeah. He's won five different weight classes. Yeah. So, yeah, fuck, he's probably been all up. But that's probably the heaviest he can get. But mm. I think with his, he's probably just backing his skill set in general, really. Like, he can be as big as he wants. I'm, I'm confident enough I can put him away, but it's going to be so unorthodox. Ha- he, like, How surprised have you been, though, from. It's like vintage Floyd's come out for this press conference because you're just thinking McGregor's just going to be shitting over him all this time. But dare I say even today, it might have been 10-9 to Floyd. He yeah. came out with some funny shit. Oh, yeah. I enjoy Floyd. I always have. I've been watching Floyd for probably a decade. I didn't watch any of his early shit Olympic games and stuff like that. But I've started to watch a lot of his fights basically since he fought like De La Hoya and Ricky Hatton and those sort of guys. I've been a bit of a regular of his. And I've always found the guy entertaining and like... He's done some uh, some really scumbag shit in his life as you know, outside today, of boxing, like. outside of boxing. But he's done plenty of stuff with the home. Even boxing. inside boxing or tees. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly right. Like the bit of a cheap shot and things like that. But you know, he's done a, he's done a bit of stuff outside outside of the ring as well that I've got respect for too. And I always find him entertaining with his cash and his money. And, and we're, we're we're far away from that lifestyle out here in uh, in Australia. So to get get the insight into a, a guy living in Las Vegas who's driving around in Bentleys, his own private jets, like. Mm. You, you sort of look at that, and I enjoy watching that shit. Even sort of the Conor McGregor's, the Dan Bilzerians, and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, ah, oh, look what that dude's doing. Yeah, and it's a, it's a, it's an archetype, you know. Like, mm. it's a, it's a regular thing that we see now. The, like, yeah. the sort of I'm rich and I'm proud. Yep. Is it a weakness they find? Because think about how much Conor's invested in this fight. Like, this is all, and you always see Floyd's posting shit about strip clubs. He's at night 50 clubs. Fifty strippers on your payroll. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like, is he? Is this just that thing? to get that payday or is it more about that legacy for him like I don't money know. Yeah. I, I think money yeah. I think he doesn't uh, I honestly think he wouldn't give a fuck regardless in this he's 0-0 zero and zero against the guy who's 49 and 0 if he gets beaten he gets beaten by uh, one of the greatest of all time so there's no yeah no loss. It, he's got balls stepping up and doing it he's got massive fucking balls and he's going to earn massive money to do it so yeah I think it I think it's all cash I think even from the early days of Conor McGregor coming onto the scene he's like I'm here to get rich 
quick and get out. Mm. Like, this is my shit. It's, it's so crazy when you see those, like, five-year-ago photos and he's got the shaved head with D Devlin fucking like on, ca- on welfare training his ass off or whatever. Cage warriors. Five yeah. years, man. And then and then today he's on, on stage claiming that he's wearing a polar bear fucking overcoat that's obviously, you know, some real expensive fucking mink mm. coat thing. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, just it, wearing probably the most you know, basically like you're saying, the art summer you know, too. following the the Floyd Mo- uh, Floyd Mayweather and fucking Dan Bilzerian stereotype. Yeah. You know? Floyd's there dissing him about that coat that he wore today. He's like, I was wearing this shit 21 years ago. Like, yeah. you think you're fucking new school? Like, fuck off. I thought like, he roasted him with his comeback. You know how Floyd's like, why aren't you wearing a suit? And then after he goes up to, uh, Floyd goes Dana. up to Dana and he's yeah. like, you see those guys who think they're rich who People wear suits? Real money, real don't, money need don't need to wear suits because yeah. we know we rich. That's true. Well, you do see like, Billionaires going 100%. around, cruising around in fucking sweatpants yeah. and shit like that. There's like Dana sold the um, UFC for 4.2 bill and he's just sitting there mm. with a T-shirt. Yeah, like he had a polo and a pair of jeans and skate shoes on. Like, yeah, go, yeah. go for it. He's it's, like, oh, it's people know who I fucking am. Gnarly to think about that kind of coin, you mm. know? Like what, what you would actually do. Not, not even just the coin, but the fucking stardom. Like seeing Connor walking out today with his shirt off like under this undercoat in front of a fucking packed Barclays Centre. It's just like, how's the confidence? on this guy you know he's he's our age and he is just you know f- for me i draw a parallel to like heath ledger's the joker you know it's mm. it's like you become so fucking obsessed with something that it sends you mm. fucking crazy and all of a sudden you are like this sensational megastar with yeah. fucking so many people and so much confidence but I wonder like how the fuck he stays comment. grounded, man. Yeah. Like, I guess he's got he's got his he's got his wife and child now, and it's almost and, you like know, a character. It you is, know, it is. It so is. Like where he he probably goes back to Dublin to his family yep. and his sisters and shit. Yep. Hey, everyone, how stings? How yep. stings? Yeah, yeah, good. Like just yeah, selling yeah. fights. Just be the same dude. Selling like, fights. Yeah, most definitely, he just he gets the craft. But how 100%. do you stay that yeah. calm and that confident? Yeah. You got to have so much self belief by putting in that hour. Yeah. So. The, the confidence comes from selling out stadiums three days in a row for people just hanging on your every single word that you mm. say. Like you mm. just walk out. But and the, shit these like the, adore um, me. the pressure. Because he's winning the crowds too each day mm. too. The crowds are, are very very pro McGregor because he's. That new school where yeah. if some people haven't seen Floyd Mayweather fight before, but they've seen Conor McGregor on their Instagram two years ago and they start following his shit. That's there's stuff for that too. There's a lot of casuals that are jumping on board that where social media generation. Exactly. This, this this girl I was 15, sitting next to sixteen year olds and girl I was sitting next to at work, like was saying that she hadn't even watched the origin. She wasn't even into, you know, the footy, which is like the most ubiquitous sort of sport in Southeast Queensland. And fucking she was saying that, you know, every time Conor McGregor comes up in her Instagram feed, it's fucking hilarious and, and like, loves it, you know. So mm-hmm. it's it's reaching the masses, you know, mm-hmm. and, and it's that Instagram, social media generation where shit can go viral quick, you know, and you get this, like he says, brash, fucking young, handsome, like, confident dude and all of a sudden people latch onto that mm-hmm. and, and it's like that character that it's like, fuck, we are buying this, hook, line and sinker. Like, give us more. It's you hard look, not to. When someone believes in themselves so much, you're like, well, you just buy in. You have to. It's yeah. Think about how yeah. many uh, people across, like, a couple of us are like, looking at back to high school days. Can you imagine how many year 11, 12 guys who are 16, 17 years <laughs> old with Instagrams who are following Conor McGregor at the moment? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. The, that's, how, that's how it expands. It's almost... He's almost got, I think he's up to eight or ten mil on... No, 14.7. And 14? Floyd's got 15.3. Just shit. a little bit more. So Holy awful, surprise. Yeah. Then you look at someone like... seven and 15.3. Something it's, like that. It's I'll hilarious. Today. We're talking about how famous these guys are. Then you look at... Uh, Rod, Rod Kardashian and he's at uh, 55 million and shit <laughs> true, like that. It's just oh. He crosses all borders, man. man. Connor, Should we touch on what went down man. with Rob? Connor, Connor had a... <laughs> A incredible diss of uh, Rob Kardashian at the <laughs> press conference yesterday where he say, uh, he, he's like because Floyd's opened a strip club in Vegas called Girls Collection and uh, just got the most 50 girls on all the, payroll all these uh, big booty bitches just up in this strip club <laughs> the most stereotypical like African American strip club going with all the girls Latinas African Americans big white girls like all sorts of True. variety <laughs> there he's got 50 on his payroll and uh, Connor's spraying Floyd yesterday because he's allegedly in ta- like trouble with the tax man over there with owing the IRS money and such. And he's like, he owes money, but he's got 50 strippers on his payroll. He's like, at least Rob Kardashian only had one. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
<laughs> out of nowhere. What a fall from grace. You followed that shit, Danny. Yeah, yeah. I woke up, um, was it a week ago now? Yeah, we're few, talking about the Kardashians few on this days shit, ago. but who cares? It's yeah, Friday no, night. No, this shit was big. And, and, the chick that he's fucking with, man, it's some loose shit. Like, basically, this chick Black has China, ha- yeah, Black China. Basically, is she, that a real name or like? Well, that's what, that's that's yeah. what we're she's known to us basically yeah. as as the masses. But this chick has basically found a way to fucking rot the Kardashians. Like, obviously, this kid heir to a you know fortune has fucking untold wealth, crazy amounts of followers, like Bryce is saying. And this, um, and she has a kid, and this chick who's Carly's a former boyfriend. former stripper. Has basically um, had had a kid to him and then fucked him off and bailed, bailed yeah. and um, and has like posted all these photos on social media of her macking on and rooting other dudes and then he subsequently lost the plot and fucking posted all this shit like and so he's this guy with however many thousand followers, hundred thousand followers and Rob, he, yeah, like he's in the oh, hundreds, yeah, hundreds, hundreds millions, of fucking yeah, yeah, millions, and um and he's there like. Putting all of his business in the street about how he got mm, he got fucked up by this this you know stripper and here's the videos she sent me of her fucking other dudes and shit like that and she's it there, is just she's filming such and a train wreck yeah. yeah which is probably you know if you were to if you were to survey the broad spectrum of humanity and society there would be fuckloads of that man think about how nasty breakups get sometimes oh, like yeah. there would be lots of vindictive people that would do shit like that. Following a breakup for sure, but this just happens to be somebody who, in this age of fucking social media, has however many millions of followers, and is that business is in the street for everybody. Mm. And then all of a sudden, little old fucking knockoff podcast in the Julia Street Studios in Brisbane Shout City, out. Australia, <laughs> is breaking down the fucking the bizzo with Rob Kardashian. He's, he's deleted his shit. <laughs> oh, has he? He's deleted his shit. Bryce, he's yeah. just been looking through his phone here. Yeah, like, like, come on, where, where's his followers? <laughs> but like, I was looking for his followers number, but he's, it's fucking True. crazy. But he deleted his shit after how that. How does he yeah. not see it coming? Did you know, not know that Black China was dating Tiger before and has a kid to Tiger? Right. Right. And that's the right. one who's ma- dating Kylie Jenner, so right. Rob's sister. Right. There's a bunch that's of those a triangle there. Like, there's a bunch of those chicks out there, man. You see it like talking talking about Instagram generation, which is mm. like kind of a common theme we 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 come back to. But um, fucking that chick is fucking outrageous. Who am I thinking of? Uh, Black China, or? Rose, fucking the one that no, was Amber, married. Amber Rose, Amber Rose, Rose number no, unit. <laughs> 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 Fucking Amber Rose. Amber Rose. Oh, She's oh, another one who's been through kid, Usher, kid, Kanye, Wiz. Wiz Khalifa, and and now you see Dental see her Floss on Instagram. Is a clothing. Ooh, yeah. Shit. yeah, it just has this. Uh, She's had sex with a lot yeah. of black dudes. Yeah, just shake, shakes her money maker, gets up in the club, and is making a fortune. She's got Wiz Khalifa for forty nine percent of his wage for the yeah. rest of his career. Yeah. So what? set that all the. A lot of these uh, gold diggers over there in Hollywood where it's oh, just gee, strip digger. clubs, cocaine, expensive alcohol. It just seems to be a uh, an ego as well. Just, just people passing around each other like currency where basically where it's, oh, he's hitting this now and now yep. she's hitting him. Yep. He's got a kid to him, so he's, she's got the money Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Oh, it happens good, so eh? many times. That's why I don't know Rob like. You just want to shake him and be like, "How did you not see it coming, guy?" But that's what that's what we're talking about, you know, like Connor being able to stay grounded with his family and friends and be able to play that character for the masses and be that huge superstar. Mm. Don't don't fucking drink the Kool Aid, you know. He's don't, an anomaly. Don't, don't buy into the hype yeah. and and all of a sudden you're fucking Rob Kardashian. Yeah, you know? uh, yeah. Connor's two hundred and fifty pounds, like like <laughs> Rob. I think Rob got up over three bills. He's, he's, <laughs> he's posting photos of D. Fuck. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, it'll never happen. What was the highlight so far for the press conference? I reckon Toronto, eh? Easily. Depends yeah. who side when, you're on. When he grabbed the flag and then Connor automatically just grabbed his bag. I just, watched the, um, I just watched the third one for the second time. and um, I thought Floyd did work. I, I, I kind of like Dedication, Floyd, yeah. and and it's that you know that human instinct that you want to back the underdog somewhat, and I feel like he got trounced in fucking Toronto. Mm. I think Floyd's uh, he got he got absolutely smashed. So to see him see him come back is kind of like yeah, yeah. It was good, <laughs> it's, fun, it's funny to see uh, Floyd's really keeping it calm backstage. The intensity on stage is right there, but in, in the back he's been calm every time and almost playing up the underdog tag as well with. You know, he, he's bigger than me. He's younger. He's been more active. Mm. Like, he's got a longer reach. You know, he's got a good skill set and stuff where I think he's, he's letting 
kind of do the uh, a lot of the heavy lifting mm. in, in this thing where he's like, I, I'm just going along for the ride. This isn't just another Mayweather fight for me. Like yeah. I've, I've been here probably say 19 times when it's mm. been at this intensity mm. where they are selling out shit like that, mm. where bo- boxing's his sport and he's essentially carried that for the best part of a decade really where all of his shows have sold the biggest money basically and fuck it's it's not far off. He's calling the shots in all yeah. of these conferences. He's like, we all face the fighters off now. Like he mm. he makes it, the rules. He's running know? shit. It feels like like yeah. He he is winning kind of to me. And it, uh, it felt like today he kind of got under Connor's skin. Like he saw Connor was getting a bit revved up over it, and he's staying cool. And I like that part when he walked over and he's like, I smell a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like I like, could just swearing at him and stuff. It was well, it's cool. like you're saying, Matty, about like you know him doing the heavy lifting. It's like. You saw that kind of exemplified today where Connor's come out all guns blazing and almost probably gone over the top a little bit with his attire and, and, and sort of lost his little pocket that he was in of, of jovialness and then Floyd's come back. So it's, you know, Floyd is obviously a lot more au fait with this, this style of fucking press format and everything like that. Fuck and yeah. he's, did you I see Floyd is, Senior? Is he winning? I don't know. He gave, he maybe gave round two away. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, it's two one Floyd. I can't believe yeah. we're like break, it is. breaking it's a, it's down. A, the it's a new press sport. I, I can't yeah. remember yeah. any other press tours like this. Didn't happen with Aldo. Where they fuck no like, doesn't want to speak English. Yeah, that's, that that played an enormous part in that too. But no one was scoring it though. It was like oh, Connor just mauled him. There wasn't that where now it's a, it's a competition where they're doing that. So yeah, it's, uh, but have we seen somebody trash talk as good as Connor before? No, no one Not has even on. come mm. and swung at Floyd like that ever. Yeah, basically, well, Connor's uh, Connor's probably the first person to give Floyd a, mm. a run for his money for sure. You're Other off. than fucking shout out to Diaz yeah. brothers, you, yeah. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, you know they Nate they they, they inv- invented that format in fucking mixed martial arts. Yeah. Shout out to those boys, and though, and Nate's just watching that at home. He's he's been quite active on Twitter about it too. <laughs> has he? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's he has Sla- p- posting pictures of him slapping Twitter's both. Up, Twitter's up there, brother, on the uh, on that toolbar. Boom, son. And he's like, calls both Dana and that the real bitch. Right? Definitely. Hilarious. He's like shot into stardom really now, eh, Nate Diaz, since the McGregor. Damn, An enormous UFC stuff. got punk today. <laughs> yeah, talk about <laughs> Brooklyn. Yep, there he is, man. Sure did. He's got one about, he's, just, he's got a shaking my head up on his Twitter feed and shit like that too. Look at his squad goals in the back there. <laughs> and Nate he posts, Diaz Twitter. He, yeah, his backdrop photo is him with a busted up eye. Doesn't get much harder than that, eh? Look at that figurine of him there <laughs> on a baseball field. <laughs> Nearly one million. They can't handle this re- realness. That's why they had to wee me out. <laughs> 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 Shaking my head. Have you seen uh, seen anything of Aaron Judge looking at that baseball field there? The home run champion? Yeah. The and he's 20-something? There's a, there's a young guy who's a rookie that's come on, to with the, uh, come on to the New York Yankees, Danny, oh. in... Uh, this guy is 6'9", 285 pounds. He's come on in his rookie season. Uh, so Joe DiMaggio, who's a... What's his name? Uh, Aaron Judge. He's a uh, early early 20s with the Yankees. Joe DiMaggio uh, is a absolute Hall of Famer, basically one of the famous, most famous Yankees ever. In his rookie season, had 29 home runs. At the halfway point Big of... Big dude. Th- at the halfway point of this season... For the All Star break, Aaron Judge is at thirty home runs, so he's passed him already. This guy's six nine, two eighty five, twenty five years old. Juice to the gills. Look at the size <laughs> of that. Hey, look at the it size. It wouldn't be a fucking knock off <laughs> if we didn't throw somebody under the oh, bus for juicing. Oh, a bit, it's baseball, but so Aaron have Judge, a, have a look at this weapon, and he's just won the home run derby. Did you see that? Uh, like five hundred and four. Like, yeah, oh, he hit, hit one uh, like five hundred and forty feet, which is essentially Linden, like California. One hundred and thirty meters. He hits a baseball. They were getting worried because the balls were nearly hitting the roof every time. He did like. hit the roof at one point too, which which would have fucked with them too because w- they don't count it. Yeah, it'd be hard to hard to keep score of, but. Um, he that in 2016. Straight, straight monster, but six, six, nine, 285 hitting it, swinging a baseball bat as hard as he fucking can. <sighs> that, uh, imagine that, talking to a superstar, can you imagine a, a 25-year-old kid like that walking around Manhattan and shit now playing for the Yankees as a superstar? It's crazy. Wouldn't be man. able to go Obvi- anywhere. Obviously, we're a you know, sports and recreation podcast and we are avid fans of all sorts of different sports. Yeah. Like, well, I won't claim every single sport that I follow, but... It's it's fucking such a desirable lifestyle you would mm. think to be a professional athlete, you know. Oh, as yeah. as a young man who, you know, 
has this, uh, I don't know if it's testosterone or what it is, but I feel like men have this outlet for like, you know, physical things. It's in our DNA to mm. need to to put our bodies to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we we live in such a way now that's not really necessary to fucking put your body to work other than to keep yourself in shape. So it's sort of like people who are able to fucking do sports because sports is something you grow up as a kid and that's the fucking best that it gets, you know. That's that's as good as shit gets is when you're playing sports. And like, you know, for somebody who gets to be able to live that dream as a, as a paid profession, oh, fuck. Pro, like professional, like you're professional, you get paid to do what you do, you know. That's a that's a fucking it's a wild thing, man. And and to be at that upper echelon of it mm. and then, you know, squ- square root of a fucking 100 times that out you know to be conor mcgregor or floyd mayweather Mm. you're you're on par with the biggest musicians politicians fucking actors whoever like fill in the blank right there you know you're you're up there you're fucking would you rather do a team sport though like have that camaraderie what would you rather uh i I would go a team sport me too just where you have mates as well too if you're touring around with the yankees or miami heat fucking fill in in the blank to, to be able to share that uh yeah, man, that like winning this. camaraderie and that atmosphere of yes, we as a collective did that, that brotherhood in, and especially in like these American sports where, you know, Queensland state of origin are, are rock, star, rock stars out here. When you're looking abroad, the market's not that big for a sport like that. So when, when we're talking about the LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, all those guys, when Miami winning rings, Cleveland winning rings, Warriors win win the rings, all of those guys and that camaraderie they have when they're playing so many games a year as well, it'd be so much time together. It would be so fucking satisfying, mm. and so much camaraderie and banter mm. and all of that stuff. Where martial arts is probably one of the loneliest sports you could you could undertake. You know, that I walk guess out to the ring and pool. swimming that and swimming swimming <laughs> on, on swimming, swimming probably surpasses right, man. man following that black line. Yeah. Just, oh, fuck. Yeah. cringe. But in saying <laughs> that, like uh, obviously, um, you know, good friend of the knockoff, Justin Hammond, is um, you know. You see the camaraderie that he has in his jiu-jitsu school and True. that sort of stuff. There's there's definitely a, a very sort of team aspect to it and, and he will attest to the fact that, you know, you don't feel any more confident than when you've got a fucking real sick team of people backing you and saying fucking you're in the best shape of your life and shit like that, you know. So I guess it's, you know, you are very self-focused because at the end of the day that cage is getting locked or that, you know, you're stepping into that ring and it's just the two of you in there and the referee, and the referee's not involved. Your friends can't so, fight for you. Like Floyd said, your fans yep, can't fight for yep. you. And, and you know, growing up as a kid, fucking when that, when that schoolyard fight goes down, it's, it's one thing to have your mates and, and everybody talking shit, but when it's like, no, 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 you two are going to throw down, all of a sudden one that's on one, like, remember that? one, yeah, on one, one on one, one on one, one on one. Hand me that uh, cold press. Cheers, oh, son. It's not the cold press. Listen. <laughs> getting jacked up on that. I need to get jacked up. I'm having between the crib and a cl- couple of glasses of red. I really need to uh, pick up the intensity here. I want to give a quick shout out to a uh, buddy of ours and a long term friend of the knockoff. Jakey. Do you want to legit try some? Fuck yeah. We've got a sample here. Let's try it. But, uh, I'll, I'll grab it. What's it called again? Stonehand Cold Press. There's been a, as I said, a long term friend of the knockoff podcast and. Uh, a buddy of ours from way back has started his own cold press coffee company. I think it's a smart method in Queensland because not everyone likes drinking hot drinks when it's 35 degrees. I, I, I for one, if, uh, in city work and things like that, there's always going out for a coffee. Started to drink iced coffee a fair bit more these days. And this friend of the knockoff, Jakey, and his Instagram at the moment is at Stonehand Cold Press. Track him, track him down. Send him a, uh, a message in the direct message. He's a supplier of cold press coffee. He'll bring it out to you in the Brisbane metropolitan area. Will quite literally Uber Eats style bring you cold press coffee. Uh, slide into his direct messenger. Get in touch with him. He's a good bloke doing good things. Uh, here we are. We're going to actually try the product live on air here at the fucking knockoff. We've got a stone hand cold press. About to pour it down. So shout out. Um Shout out Filthy Rich, our, uh, our all things internet, IT, the techni- fill in the blank guru. The technical, <laughs> he's the fourth member of the knockoff podcast. He's the, he's the silent member of the knockoff. Um, he says to um, to just go straight on the rocks. So I've put a, 
put a big ice cube in everybody's cups here. If you uh, if you go into Jake's Instagram as well at Stonehand Cold bottle. Press, it's a beautiful yeah. bottle. Too. He's got quite a lot of quite a lot of Sick varieties label. there. He's got um, it's basically a version of a squealer if you're into like, your craft beer, like ear medicine in a big bottle. So it looks like some underground shit. <laughs> yeah, it is which um, what I like. He'll take it uh, as we've said. He'll send it directly to you. Yeah, it smells good. And we're gonna have a try here. He's got on on his Instagram account at Stonehand Cold Press. He's got. Variety of photos where he's adding slices of lime to this. You could put spice rum in here with your cold press. What? A shitload of variety. We know we've got a, a lot of listeners in Brisbane. Let's fucking get behind a bloke making a go of it for himself. Sort of like we are at the knockoff as well. We're trying to get a product off the ground here. It's We're 12 months into it. Mix with, uh, so far, I've had a Captain Morgan's and soda and a. Uh, what vino are we drinking here, Bruce? Man, I don't even know. Malbec, boys. Dogger. It's a nineteen Dogger nineteen Yolo. it's a nineteen eighty two nineteen eighty two grain termitage. Like, yeah, it's right. worth fifteen grand. It says two thousand and fifteen <laughs> on the bottle there, man. Oh, 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 oh <laughs> just big dog in it. Oh, I've been listening to too much Floyd Mayweather and Connor shit trying to just stay in the fast lane. Here we go. Here we go. Live test on air. This is no bullshit. This isn't a fucking paid product. We'll give it our honest assessment. Here yeah. we go. And oh, I'm, like not, I'm not wow. even a coffee drinker and I, I dig the fuck yeah. out of that. That's cool. People in Queensland, when it's 35 fucking degrees, don't want to go sit outdoors and drink a hot drink. It just doesn't happen. Stonehand cold press, direct message. Contact Jake. He'll contact you. That was fucking delicious. Straight up. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, not bad. That was beautiful. It reminded me of Yoga Chef Coffee from Ethiopia, the heart of coffee. Me that too, man. <laughs> me, too. <laughs> me too, man. You oh, nailed it, bro. I, I was there in May. I was there in May. <laughs> oh, me? Oh, dude, yeah. Early Feb for me, man. That's fucking... I'm, I'm, oh man! I those, try to get back whenever I can. And those sunsets, man, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but like, legit, people think se- uh, Central America is where coffee's from, but it's actually from Ethiopia. Is Ethiopia? that right? The first yeah. greenhouse was built True. in Europe to house a, a coffee tree because it comes grows like fruit, and then right. it's the bean on the inside. Jeez, well, I love cardio some coffee. So that's why I, this is good. Cardio machines, the Ethiopians. Is that, still got the Queensland jersey on. You're in attendance on Wednesday night as Queensland sealed yet another. Origin series, yeah. Well, where do great, I great night. Your f- first Origin in attendance too. It was. It was a very good one to go to. Like um, straight after game one, when we lost, I, I just I didn't have a feeling. I was, you know, New South Wales team looked great. They looked so dangerous. Best team I've seen them on paper. Um, and I was like, I, I just like I'll buy some tickets because it's the decider. It, it could be come out our way. Worst case scenario, I'll sell the tickets. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I was just happy. Uh, first time it was it was a record apparently fifty four two hundred and fifty. Uh, it was. And I've never ever heard a stadium that loud. Like I've been to English Premier League game and you hear them all singing songs, chanting. But the Queenslander chant was just a roar, and mm. it, it was like only a couple minutes between each chant that it would start off again. And oh my god, how good was that first half? Cronk that kick over that like oh, it was just on a string. Hey, like. I can't have. I don't have words anymore. It was it was, de- it was de- deja vu for New South Wales fans like myself. It was de- dead set Groundhog Day there at the Cauldron. And you mentioned you mentioned the crowd and the atmosphere. I've been to plenty of state of origins at uh, at Suncorp Stadium, and the atmosphere that they get and the passion behind that team, I think, is just something that New South Wales don't get at this point. Like there, there is just so much distance between those two sides. This has been a hell of a competitive series and something mm. where. To me, it was New South Wales made their bed. They had to lay in it with copping that L and the decider. They were up 16-6 at half time in game two in front of 80,000 of their home fans and Qu- Queensland find a way to finish over mm-hmm. the top. Origin three turn up prior to this game. New South Wales were two from ten in deciders at, at that specific stadium. We're now two from 11 uh, after that night. The thing, it was so hard to stomach for me too because it was a, su- such a strange series where... Queensland got a record score put on put on them in that very stadium in the first game. Mm. Queensland improved out of sight in that series when New South Wales just went the other way. And it's like they did the swap as well because New South Wales did the right thing. They stuck the same squad together. It's not really any injuries. They didn't. They kept the same structure. So they did the right thing, sticking with all their players. And Queensland had twenty six or twenty eight different players through that whole series for injury and all that. But it, it, it just was a series where I was. Worried. I I legitimately thought this would was going to be a really tough game three. But as you said, like Queensland fashion, they just came out and and I made a joke before the game. I was like, oh, do it for the TC Debbie victims. But then just before the game, after J um before JT's uh, tribute, and I'll get to that. 
they played the video for all Queensland disasters and stuff, and like it, they really got everyone thinking about it. And then when JT came on before uh, Bernard Fanning, Fanning oh. man, <laughs> you just, you, just you, you, you felt you felt that something changed in the stadium because it's like the belief was there. We're like, yeah, we're actually going to do this. Like, and you could feel that energy, collective energy. Yeah, and 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 I think Matt Rogers summed it up really well. The difference between the two teams, like, um, you see after the game what it's all about when they're in the shed. Yippee, yippee, yeah, yeah, oh. yippee, yippee, and they're singing, and then you've got. <laughs> Alfie in the middle, an Shout old legend, old nugs. legend, shirt off, <laughs> spinning his t-shirt around, and all the forex mangoes just going everywhere. And and he said, "You don't see that in New South. Like they'll celebrate, but you don't see the old dogs all there. And it's just a real unity between. Doesn't matter when you play for Queensland, like they they look after each other. Jorel yaya has got a job there forever. All these people, boys' club, as you say, for sure. And what they've won." 11 from 12 series now or something like that. And Alfie's still in the middle and it still means as much to him as it did on the first oh, one. When he caught that ball. Oh, Didn't oh, that kill people? Yeah, well, <laughs> what, what, a, what a moment for him. But a part, that, a part that really irked me as a Blues fan was the press conference afterwards with, with Laurie Daly where, mm. you know, he... He's like, is it o- obvi- obviously he didn't seem that bothered. Some of his statements were the, were the ones that bothered me though where he's now one from five as a coach. And he's gone. Is it the coach? The, the, the part that uh, Boyd Cordner went back in, went into bat for Laurie. Mm. Actually, as a good coach, and I think Laurie has done really well this series. But he's one from five now, and a few things that he had said that I didn't like was, you know, it's a, it's a young team where you know the, we've got to learn how to win things like that. You've got your halfback now is zero from seven in, in Origin series. Seven. But I believe he's our best halfback. Do I, Mitchell Pearce, I didn't think he had his best game in game two or game three. Game one, though. Fire. G- game one played really well. Who else would we pick, though, to, to replace Pearcey at seven? Like, I think if you roll up next year and he's playing good club football, you almost have to pick him again. I know people love hanging him out to dry, but has Adam Reynolds' club footy nestle, like, translated into getting back in? Do you move Maloney in from seven, Moylan at six? No, they had the right team this year. They it had was. the right team. It was all mental in the it game, was. the third game. It's like they came to a point. It's like they just didn't bring that same intensity they had in game. They led most of the series. That's right. We, they were, a, had to score it, most of the series. It was so hard to cop as a Blues fan. As you say, we, we'd won three from four halves of football and we still had to come up here for a decider. Like we'd comfortably won two out of th- like three out of four halves and we still had to come up here and got pumped. And the thing with Laurie at the press where he's like, you know, it's a, it's a young team. We need to learn how to win. We've got... Bunch of guys in here who are 24, 25. Cameron Munster debuted for Queensland that decider. He's 22 years old. Dylan Knapp is 24 years old. Valentine Holmes, 21 years old. Glasby came in off the Valentine bench. Valentine Holmes, he's 21. 21. He's 21, man. Wow. Val- Valentine Holmes has won How a grand How many tries did he score? Three. <laughs> Should have had four if Cameron Smith passed him the footy out wide there That's too. Right. Yeah. Smith bombed that in and he, he apologised to him straight away. So Val could have had four. You're right. Joined, he was the first Queensland guy... Like, what Gay guy scored a hat trick last year. What about his four tries for Queensland, four wins for Queensland, yeah. three wins for Newcastle, and he's had over a year at Newcastle. Oh, oh man, uh, like Gay guy, yeah. Mm. Like he's more wins for mm. Queensland than he That's has. The thing. He doesn't barely even knew yeah. who he was, man, until right. Origin, and then I, I was the one that called him for man of the series for sure. He was, one, he was one that the Broncos let go. Dane Gay guy, he's right. former Bronco. Right. Imagine having him oh. in the back line here, but that's the thing where Laurie's like, you know, it's a young team. Queensland have got a young team, and they just, I think you just can't underrate the value of them. Those rookies being able to look around a dressing shed and seeing Jonathan Thurston, even though he wasn't playing in that decider, he's still in Didn't that, still in that room. Co- Cooper Cronk in that room. You, you can sit next to him knowing that you've got Cronk out there. Cameron Smith's going to run out first. Didn't he captain. step up game three? He took C- that C- like charge. Eh? Cameron Smith had a blinder in that third game. and Game one and two. Jo- bit. Jonathan Thurston uh, had a conversation with a couple of passionate league fans after the origin, and everyone's saying Thurston's the, the immortal you got to have Cameron Smith into that club as well. Like oh. he's fucking won everything as captain in everything. He's an Iron Man, and he doesn't even look like a footballer. Like he doesn't have that ripped up physique. He's just got. He's a cardio machine, and basically one of the one of the best football players we've we've ever fucking With, seen. Out of date. What, I think what, what a player! Yeah. Like you should, ask all the players. Immortal. He's the player's player. You ask all the Queenslanders, and they're like Cameron Smith. He's yeah. the he's the leader. He's the one talking to the boys. And if he's had he had a quiet game in game one and two, they said like seven meters or something in I the whole he, game. He must have carried a sternum injury into that game, like yeah. into that first game. Apparently, he'd, he'd carried that into it. Didn't run out of dummy half. Where if you look at that decider the other night, if you had. One to 13 of the starting sides. It's hard to compare the bench because each different player is getting different minutes and things like that. But if you look at that decider, it is basically one to 13, 
you couldn't tell me a New South Wales player that outplayed a Queensland starter. But you know, yeah, so I know. But like, look at the firepower you had. I was scared of Josh Jackson in game two, fire. Fafida, like every of Queensland was like, oh no, Fafida. And we thought he was going to be more fired up. I don't know if you saw the comments from the yeah. Kalanga Tavern about... Oh no, there was a bit of controversy with him and Fafida was expecting... Shout out the KT. Did you, hear, <laughs> did you hear about that? No, no. There was, a, there, was, there was a girl there in a uh, New South Wales Blues jersey who had a, uh, you know, the like the ba- baby borns that you can get. She had a... Uh, like a, a, a baby a, doll. A, a yeah, she, she had a, a dark skin baby born on her back in a oh, Blues jersey and she's like, I'm oh, Andrew Fafida. Right, so not. Uh, but did you know not, what? Not, not not above board at all. But that got dragged out in the media. Mm. See, that went viral oh, so through somebody, social media. Uh, it was so, very okay. reminiscent. You know what I mean? When so. um, like remember Tamana Tahu walked away from New South Wales for that racist comment um in from camp Johns yeah. from Johns, and then so um Greek English took that to heart and just came out like an animal. Yeah, remember yeah. he was running over people. He'd, like that's True, what I thought yeah. Fafita was going to come out with. And you know who does needs a shout out? JT, not. Jonathan Thurston by Jake Trojevic. That guy was playing he awesome was, he too. Was, he was the Blues' best player the other night in Origin 3. Na- natural footballer. I think his brother was unfortunately injured at, a, mm. at the worst possible time. where he's, In a Broncos game, I remember. He, he would have played on the wing for New South Wales, probably in Morris's spot, if that's that. But no, but no excuses. I thought Brett Morris had, had a, a strong series. He didn't let anyone down. But just that losing mentality has just crept in where we just... That doubt don't know how to ice games of football or even get back in the fight. It got back to 12-6 after half time in Origin 3 yeah. and I thought, as close geez, as there's got. a bit of momentum there, but gave away one one soft penalty basic for a rake, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure. On Wade, McGuire, was Wade, it? Wade Graham. Oh, yeah. where he gave, Wade Graham, I'm a, an enormous fan of his. I, I love watching him at Clubland. He gave away some uh, some cheap penalties in Origin, which probably cost New South Wales. And they're good bench players to bring on because they're 80-minute boys, Definitely, both him, mate, Jake Taroy. On, on paper, it was, it was a great Blues team that they'd picked, but just couldn't, uh, the mentality, could, yeah, couldn't you're get right. the job done at, at the Cauldron when it mattered. And that you just Suncorp is just an absolute fortress to come and win. Mm. And it, even when you've got people who are on debut like Munster step up mm. like he did, like his handling, he was playing like he was just playing for Melbourne Storm or, as they said, when he was he, out here on the West. Because he basically was. Like, you've got... That's it that was Melbourne a stroke, spy, no. stroke of genius from Kevy where Kevin Walters, the coach of Queensland, because Michael Morgan has played five eight for the Cowboys week in, week out. He's had to play a bit of halfback this year as well. But Michael Morgan is a unbelievable player and he that could slot into six for pass, the flick ball though. Offload. How, how often do you see Morgan do that? He's got no. but he flicked that flick pass to win a grand final for the Cowboys, basically. And then Remember that? To the win grand game. final out uh-huh. the back. Yeah. Remember the Cowboys well, the won the premiership? Broncos. Uh, went went to Golden Point against the Broncos. He it Manages JT. to get free, flicks it to uh, Kyle Felt. Kyle Felt, that's right. Kyle Felt. And, and he uh, did it again game two for Origin. Yeah, like, he's, done, he's done it for Australia. He's done it. He threw the flick pass to Gagai to win the game. They said they set that up for game and two. They kept running out. And Kevy chose to pick him at centre because yeah. he's a bigger body to mark Josh Dugan. And Josh Dugan didn't have his best night for the Blues by any stretch as well, but he had um, good try, though. They picked Munster at six. You've got Cameron Smith, nine. Kronk, seven. Munster, six. Ch- chambers in the centres, Billy back in one. It's all Melbourne. So this kid was able to go out at 22 years old, super comfortable because he's trained there every day for the last fucking five years with these guys. So unbelievable that Queensland winning mentality and, and they get it done again. Have you seen the photos when they all played together at North? Like you see Slater, Cronk, mm. um, oh. and... My yeah, older, uh, see o- the older brother. Footage of uh, JT, like in his little tribute thing. <laughs> how much has he filled out? And like, even in his recent career, he was just he, this uh, little tiny. When he came on the scene, dog. When he came on the scene at the Bulldogs as a utility, he was uh, he was tiny. Like Stephen uh, Larkham, each other. Can- Can- Canterbury would probably be a bit uh, bit disappointed that they sold him like, <laughs> back back in the day. A little bit. It's like, nah, we've got. Uh, We've got Perry here. We're we're good to go. Like grew up nah. in Sunnybank. I didn't realise. Yeah, I thought he was like North Queensland born and raised. But well, have he, some more of that really? Stonehand. Yeah. I thought he was. Mate, how good is that shit? I know. Tasty as. Yeah. That's it. As we said before, you don't always want to have a hot drink with a coffee. Or no. I love the effect of coffee. I really thoroughly enjoy it. Something to do with the uh, that Stonehand and and wine combination as well. On <laughs> On a Friday similar, night. Similar flavours. <laughs> it honestly is similar flavours. Not, not even just the flavour, but something to do with the buzz. I'm a little bit... Yeah. Um, a little bit wasted. So <laughs> where, where, where do you guys want to get freaky? <laughs> 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 
But where to now for uh, next year for New South Wales and Queensland? You think they will keep Munster or get back with Milford? Well, I guess you just Cameron Munster. Cameron Munster played Milford out of a jersey. In I the, think so know, too. Decided as far as I'm concerned, Anthony Milford, fantastic player, fantastic might talent. Might be the new uh, interchange. It's just a. Uh, it could be. He could be where Benny Hunt might be up, make way. Benny Hunt. Didn't get a whole lot of time the other night, but it probably wasn't expected Got to. Got a big cheer, though, time. when he came yeah. on, because oh. we already knew we won by oh, then. Like. For sure. And, and a Broncos, Broncos guy running on in front of his home crowd to, to get his debut. So he, he was one of the unique situations where he played for Australia before he played for Queensland, Benny Hunt. So. Mm. And shout out Queensland doing two laps of honour for the boys who missed out the first Was it really? Yeah. Was it really? That's, That's just awesome. hard. Yeah, see, they're just giving back like that. Fucking, they just get it. They just yeah. get it and... Uh, I'm not convinced New South Wales do. Did you see um, Fatty put uh, Andrew Johns on the spot, like in the in the post game broadcast, saying, oh, no. "You know, would you would you put your hand up to to coach the team?" Like I saw that. <laughs> it was it, so it awkward. He, because, he actually gave because a, he's like, "Man, I'm not going to fucking jump in Laurie's grave on TV yeah. afterwards." You've asked me on live, put me in, coach, li- like, live yeah. on air. Like, yeah. of, of course not. That's something no, that I would have to go away and yeah. <laughs> consider. Fatty's just trying to get the fucking it's still the pot, I legend. <laughs> I have the utmost respect for Joey was phenomenal player and immortal in his own right but I completely agree with him what he said I think he fucking nailed it where he's like don't I don't know if I he don't, needs yeah, the pressure I don't know if I need that stress in my life right now where he's had his own troubles with indiscretions off the field things like that the origin gig is just so much pressure and not just three games a year it's watching football and not oh, yeah. he's got a yeah, he's got a media course. media career now where those boys were like Brad Fittler Andrew Johns those Finchie, those sort of guys, even the Fox guys, Justin Hodges, things like that, players of that like would be making very, very handsome money for just sitting around talking about the game. Of course. Do you so, want them back next year, Laurie? Yeah. But I, mate, I wouldn't... Uh, you know, I'm going out for dinner every night of the week. I don't happen, happen mm. to necessarily catch every single game of the round. I fucking love my life. I love yep. my wife. <laughs> like, pers- I, got my know, I, yeah. I don't really want to be sweating this fucking pressure yep. of the public scrutiny of... You know, it's fucking serious mm. over here, man. Oh, yeah. People take it fucking Big seriously. Time. It is. And not just here, too. Like, I uh, I fucking met this uh, police officer once who, who had done some sort of deployment, like peacekeeping type thing in Papua New Guinea. And he used to say that they, they're fucking rugby league crazy over there, right? Mm. And Fanatics. And they have a totally different way of life where death is a very different thing in, in their societies. It's it's very present, man. And life you speak, is cheap. You speak to anyone who's spent any amount of time in the third world and they will tell you they've seen seen dead bodies, seen people die. Like it's it's very much in the forefront of life in in, in more impoverished places. Mm-hmm. And um and he he said that there would be like, you know, murder is nothing over there and it happens all the fucking time. Crime capital of the world, Port Moresby, isn't it? Yeah, it's fucking up there, man, if, if, if not, you know, correct. But he would say that the amount of beheadings after a state of origin match would be fucking, you know, a huge spike based Kenny. on based on team lines. And, and you know, whoever was a Blues supporter, whoever was a Maroon supporter, whichever... Way, any Blues whichever, left now? Like, fuck. If they're <laughs> beheading them all, 12 years, wouldn't be many. Or now. any Queenslanders, no. or any oh, Queenslanders, yeah, maybe the back. other way around. Oh, true. Right. Blues Nation. Who knows? <laughs> firm, but that's firm. I heard, uh, used to know a guy who was a, a head banker for... Um, a predominant bank out here that had a set up in PNG and uh, said that there would quite often be imitation police roadblocks up there where if you could generally suss it out by their vehicle, sometimes you weren't fortunate enough to do that and those people aren't here anymore. But mm-hmm. he said if you could suss it, and he said there's times where this would happen on multiple occasions where you sort of 100 metres out, you can notice it, just plant your foot and just keep on driving. Wow. I had mates work out for like Shell and stuff over there actually, now that I think about it, over in um, Papua New Guinea. And they said it would be so dangerous they had to hire like um, like mercenaries to guard the place. But people would yep. just come onto the site with guns and try to like take over the shit. Like, yep. I'm the captain now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty much Captain wow. Philip. Like. It's a fucking straight up. Um, but I've met um, numerous people from PNG out here. Beautiful in, people. In Brisbane. Lovely nature, similar to Fijian mm. people were. Just a, a lovely nature, nice temperament. I, my next door neighbour for in excess of twenty five years was uh, was PNG native, like b- born and bred, and was she was fantastic. Got the fuck out of there, you know. Like, mm. and that's w- we live in such a crazy little bubble over here, you know. We're we're so sheltered from all the shit that goes on in real life, you know. Mm. Not that this, you know, this is our real life, basically, mm. you know, n- not. 
persecuted by war on on the lines of religion or politics or anything we have pretty much a free you know free speech democratic society and you only have to switch on the fucking six o'clock news for sbs and you see some shit that's going on like if you were a person in syria who just happens to be of the same thing you know of the same general belief that we should all be good to each other and be nice and it's better to be like happy and and peaceful and all that sort of stuff like you're saying you know it's not it's not because a country has problems then every person who's born in that country has problems it just happens to be that the rule of law or justice or you know whatever fucking human system that we've put in place has gone awry and they deal with some fucking real shit on the daily and some heavy amounts of death and like yeah, you're totally you, right. You just you you can't even really, as somebody who lives in one of these like insanely fucking lucky places in the world, and you know, I mean, I I can complain from you know working a day job nine to five Monday to Friday and feel like you know fucking prisoner or yeah, I know feel a prisoner, know, yeah. feel depression, feel anxiety, all of those all of those you know societal pressures and fucking things that humans deal with, but. When you put it in perspective, on, a, on yeah. a weekend I get to go out and climb climb a mountain that's within a you know thirty minute drive of my house, and then follow it up with a swim at the beach that's within one of the fucking you know top three beaches that I've ever been to in my life, and I and I've done some travel like little, it, little, we're fucking lucky out mm, here, man. A little scattered twenty milli like on this enormous we're fucking surface. lucky out here. Yeah, it's, it's important great. to remember like my mum used to work out at Nauru in the uh, detention center, heavy, like counselling heavy. some. People who come from war stricken countries, and you know, I should tell me all the time these are normal people who are like lawyers, doctors, all types of things, yeah. But yeah. then they just get stuck in a country that's rid with war and they have to exactly. make an escape, they lose their family, and then they end up in this place and they've got no choices. Is that, a, br- is that a breach of that patient confidentiality, son? Like? Well, now that's just not there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but how do, how do you deal with that then? How do you deal with the situation of? Of refugees and people that are good people coming from other filter, countries, you have to have a filtration. come here. But it's like, hey, hey, we've got it good here. We don't want to. We don't want to have other other, you know, yeah. troubles being brought in and all that sort of stuff. And it's it's such a crazy way that we've figured out how to live by you know drawing lines in the sand to say this is Australia, this island. And if you come here and and try to do anything, we're going to fuck you up. And you know, vice versa. We we draw these lines in the sand. It's like you stay on your side, I'll stay on my side. And for whatever reason, that seems to be the way that we can we can best coexist. And I guess it comes from you know early tribal days. We we operate in smaller groups, and then you know. Mm eventually you'd have to think that we're moving towards globalisation, right? I don't know. It's like an equilibrium. I think the, the haves are getting more towards the have-nots, that gap between. I think because we are living such a good life, it just means someone somewhere else, unfortunately, the first costs the, that. Like, f- people are building a lot of shit in China for us to live this life. Sweatshops, you know? all that sort of shit. The first world and the third world, just the fucking growing divide just becomes an ever, ever increasing chasm. Mm. And it's like, fuck. What do you do? You enjoy it for them. And, and, the, and the population is only increasing. It's yeah. just, we live in a fucking, we live in a really crazy time. And I guess you could argue that of any, any time in society. I saw something on Instagram this morning that was like, uh, Vice actually put, um, they're doing a, a photography series called Death in the C- or Murder in the City, New NYC, 1910 to 1920. And it's basically a bunch of old analog photography that they've obtained from um, the NYPD in, in that era. And it's like all of these photos of, you know, people in... Crime scenes. Crime scenes, basically, yeah. Oh, but wow. because they're wearing like, you know, the 1910 garb, you sort of look at it and you can see this artistic, artistic fucking wow. quality to it. And it's like, holy shit, this is, you know, and, and it just makes you instantly, and, and my response to it was like, could you imagine having been around in fucking 1915 New York City? Yeah, man. You know what I mean? Like try to fucking... You've try. been to New York, right? I've been to New York for for uh, three days. What? Three days, so a fly-by trip. But um, something fucking really tangible about that mm. place, man. Feel Com- the energy, eh? Coming in, coming into all of the... And, and I guess it has, it has a huge thing to do with the fact of um, Australians being fucking so, so, you know, 
shown heaps of different fucking media from from New York City oh, as yeah. a kid. Like everybody can remember fucking Home Alone, New York City, or yeah. fucking fill in the blank, man. So many fucking movies oh, that I honestly felt as though it was like it's a culture hub. It was like a caricature of itself. It was sort of like... You feel in a movie, hey. Exactly. It feels like you're walking around on a movie set and these are all actors and all of these shop fronts, you know, they're selling food and shit, but they're actually just... This is just a studio, you know? It has that just... And and Vegas is the same as well. Mm. I don't know. Maybe it's just being an Aussie, seeing all those movies and then going to like big city bright lights type, type feel, but... I don't know. It's fucking. There's a, there's a trippy energy to that place, and to think of that in like 1910, mm. 1920. Well, there's still yeah. enormous amounts of construction going on within that population. There, yeah. you see the the old footage of Empire State Building with people yeah. just walking on beams with no ropes a, um, or scaffolding. Uh, when New York was ha- New York, I had a sick po- poster. Yeah. There, there's actually a f- another photography series that I think you're thinking of, Briss. And I used to have a big like wall size poster of these guys, and they're sitting bi- on a bar. They're either building the Empire State mm. or fucking something similar, like, like s- similarly Center high, and, yeah. fucking, I want to say, like, o- over fucking... 60, 80 f- stories. 50, yeah. 60 stories high. And they're sitting on a beam having their s- smoke mm. or having their morning tea, eating a couple of sandwiches at 10 a.m., no harnesses, no nothing. Well, just you know how many of them died? Like, there's... I heaps, remember hearing something, there's crazy heaps. stats, how many people died. Uh, Irishmen Are you building New York. Yeah. Matty, yeah. Uh, like, they said... Ireland pretty much built New York City. Mm. Well, Connor says that. Is that <laughs> uh, <laughs> now I'm coming back yeah. to take it. <laughs> yeah. Is yeah. that Gangs of Gold? Gangs is of that New- historically oh. accurate? Gang- Gangs of New York? No, Gangs of Gold was the soundtrack, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, Gangs, Gangs of New, of New York's York. Movie. Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah, Leonardo what DiCaprio. Well, there was some that that barber. Cameron Diaz. I look at these fucking pulley systems that they have set up. If you Google Empire State old school construction photos, and you think some of the of height they're at. Like they're, they're, those people there, there's three men standing on these beams without any form of rope, scaffolding, anything in a set of overalls and leather shoes like that 1915 fashion. And uh, we're, we're in excess of 50 stories, just, just hanging around. And, you know, we're, we get caught up tight in this day and age about a, a, a train coming 15 minutes late or. That's the one I'm talking about shit. right there. Look at, yeah, look at this. Look at that. That is insane. Is that shopped? No, oh, you see no, that photo man. everywhere, no way. man. No way. I, I, don't, I wouldn't call that a shop. Haters will say it's shopped. Yeah, haters will say it's Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking statement that is. That's that insta Isn't term. it funny, yeah, that social media shit where there's just like phrases that you could say to somebody over the age of 50 and they wouldn't have a fucking clue what you're talking exactly. about. Yeah. But then you say to somebody else, oh, my fucking group chat is lit right now. <laughs> <laughs> like it keeps like, morphing. I know exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. <laughs> Future's so bright, he's got to wear shades, <laughs> man. <laughs> you throw on shade this way. Yeah, yeah, you can catch this fade. <laughs> oh, what's his name, Antoine? Yeah, Antoine Dixon. Oh, there's, there's, one. One. there's one for we you. We should do a full episode where we explain all Gen Y Lingo. colloquialism. Mate, but we're already behind. Everyone everyone at this table is in excess of 27 years old. Yeah. Facts? 27, yeah, this year. Facts, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I remember that shit, baby. Yeah. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it's uh, everyone, over, but we're, they're... Gen behind us, what are they? We're, we, we're Gen Y. What's Gen X. Are they Gen X? Really? Is that what you're right? Gen X is like... I thought Gen um, X was like 35 to 40-year-olds and shit. Gen X, I remember, I always I always used the yardstick of Gen X as this next-door neighbour that I had growing up as a kid, Sean, and his mum, Heather. And I think his stepdad. I don't think it was his real dad. But... Um, I remember my old man used to get the shits with Heather because she would just come over unannounced all the time and she would like, she'd find our cat in the backyard and then she'd bring him over and we'd be away on holidays and like leave the back door unlocked and she'd have let the cat in and then she'd tell us about it after the fact and dad would always be like, oh, that's really? a bit weird, Heather. Yeah. Entering our house when we're not there and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long do you stay for? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a bit uncomfortable. Yeah, like what were you doing in there? But yeah. Sean, I remember. Put I the cat in the yard. I, I would have like, been maybe... Um, Fuck, I don't know, man. Maybe eight or nine or something like that. And he was probably in his 20s. And I remember he had a car and he was one of the, like, you know, first young people that I drove around in a car. He had this old, like, muscle car looking Sigma thing or whatever. But oh. he he was always older. And Chris and Chris and I would, would go over and play. Um, he always had... Hide the sausage. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, after he... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'd bring us in and... <laughs> 
But he, he, his folks were somehow affiliated with Hong Kong. So he would always have the latest, like, you know, Sony games and all that sort of shit. And I remember playing Atlanta Olympics on Sony. What you'd was Atlanta? 96? You'd be eight years old. 96? Yeah, you'd be eight, yep. yeah. Was that the and, circle? And I remember run? the first time I ever saw it, man, I was 100, like, 100 sprint. look at these fucking graphics. Like, holy fucking <laughs> shit, this is the future. Cubes, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I remember it yeah. clearly. It's tattooed in my fucking nice. memory, man. Nice. Like, and, and, and you know, the fucking Aussie, like, overalls that would go on, you'd be throwing discus and it was like 3D views and they were, like, so much more fucking three-dimensional than the Nintendo, Super Nintendo era, mm. you know? And um, he, he was my yardstick because I think he used to listen to, like, Smashing Pumpkins and maybe Smashing Pumpkins would have been like towards the end of that, but it'd yeah. probably be tonight, more tonight like, around then and shit. Yeah, yeah. that's a jam. That's yeah, a jam. Oh man, tonight, tonight, Smashing Pumpkins. Smashing fucking Pumpkins, are fucking beast. Awesome. Yep. Yeah, still, still holds up for me. I don't listen often, but no. any time someone put on some Smashing Pumpkins, I wouldn't get mad at them. No, Billy, like Billy Corgan is a weird dude. Like, and and mm. obviously synonymous with creative types. He did some work following Smashing Pumpkins. Like, if um, if anybody's seen the movie Spun, mm-hmm. Billy Corgan did the soundtrack to that with his uh, then side project mm. Zwan, yeah. which was like an acoustic setup. Six 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 was the name of this song, and mm. that's um that's a cover Ooh. of. Uh, Iron Maiden song. It is, yeah. D- done yeah. acoustic. Yeah. Fucking YouTube right now. Oh, if if you're playing at home, yeah. um, Zwan Number of the Beast. After yeah. look at that. It's the opening it. opening sequence to mm. this film that's just uh, so suited to the visual that you're getting and and the story that ensues in that fucking yeah. film. Watch it this strap weekend. yourself if, in. Yeah. If you hear if you hear this, if you got some downtime, Spun, S P U N Tperta. The plot is just essentially it's speed. A, yeah speed and amphetamine usage in a, like this little American small town and such an indie film and like whatever mm. whatever you'd even call it I'm not even sure so I'm like not, I'm, Clockwork I'm, Orange cult, I'm not, yeah, cult I'm, film I'm yeah. not a, yeah cult film that yeah, yeah. Na- nailed it like that's the yeah. uh, it's just a really good movie really cool soundtrack the late great Brittany Murphy plays a fucking incredible part in the film like mm. just just go see it no no spoilers no nothing like yeah. that just uh Mickey, mate, get Mickey around Rourke it. is the is yeah. the crystal cook he plays a fucking yeah. oh. beast mode character beast hold on did you say Brittany Murphy's gone yeah man yeah Brittany mm-hmm. Murphy passed away mm-hmm. yeah jeez i didn't even yeah. i've been living under a rock right, yeah fantastic like a while ago too probably 4 to 5 years i'd say oh that Brittany, whistle bubble Brittany probably Murphy. got me you know i used she to was um, great in 8 I miles used to she get was her great yeah mina savara mixed up oh really and they're both no, in that movie yeah, yeah. Good she was Brit- a beauty Murphy, I, I was an enormous fan yeah yeah there she is but what a legacy though how did too, she die like, Gone but not forgotten. Like she was great. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Was overdose, this around the same time? Um, he he allegedly, allegedly thrown died? allegedly there, Dan. Allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. Wow. Two thousand and nine. So uh, Eight o'clock a.m. on December twenty, two thousand and nine. The L, the Los Angeles I said Fire five Department. Five years. Wow, it's longer. Yeah, the uh, Los Angeles Fire Department responded to. Uh, Inverted quotes, a medical request at the Los Angeles home Murphy and Monjack shared. I presume that's her husband. She had apparently collapsed in a bathroom. Firefighters attempt to resuscitate Murphy on the scene. Um, she was transported to the medical center where she died at 10.04 after going into cardiac arrest. Well, there was so that, the two, primary two cause hours. of Murphy's death, <sighs> pneumonia, <sighs> iron deficiency, and anemia, anemia, and multiple really? drug intoxication. Mm-hmm. Ooh, okay. That's yeah. It. Wow. Yeah, so wow. maybe like, you know, some oh, okay, elevated levels of hydrocodone, asminotafin, oh, yeah. L-methamphetamine, chlorinamine, DMT. So I'd say she was probably into the meth and that was whatever it was mixed with. Wow, she was good on 8 Mile though. That was <laughs> Yeah, fantastic. That's a good movie though. That's all hold up. Yeah. Oh, and she was fucking beast in in Spun as well and yeah. obviously knew about the type of character that she was playing because she basically plays like a oh, a really flighty fucking Speed methamphetamine head, yeah. actor. Yeah. 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 That's gold, yeah. Yeah. It's been years since I've seen that film. I've probably seen it two or three times. I saw it not so long ago, hey. I I rewatched it. And the scene, um, spoiler alert, but uh, there's a scene where the main protagonist... um, Spider Mike. No, no, no. no, The the driver. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he puts some... um, Driving a Volvo. (laughs) He fucking, like, he basically, like, it's just kind of in the background of the storyline, but he, he... 
he like basically what would you say like fucking kidnaps a girl mm. and like ties her to a bed and fucking ga- hostage, hostage sort of hostage, situation. Hostage, yeah, hostage. Holds her hostage. Yeah, and then like leaves the room with this fucking really loud like CD skipping. So it's like a fucking a death metal band like yeah. you know when old school CDs used to skip. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then like on he slams the door to leave, and she's like. Tied to this bed completely nude with her eyes and mouth gaffer taped and it's just a CD going... This is tattooed in your head again. While, while she's full of insanely speed. Insanely loud. Yeah, yeah, it's like... For like 12 hours in a and busted up motel. And spank, it just bang. leaves you there and you're like, holy yeah. fuck. Cult like, film, as you say. Mm. There, yeah, there we go. I went through a phase in high school where I was all about those films. Mm. Like Train Spotting, Requiem yeah. for a Dream... Spun Clockwork Orange Would you a, consider a that? Clockwork 100% and that's a cult film yeah, like That, a lot that of, shit tripped me out man A lot oh, of Stanley Kubrick's that. films I haven't seen Full that. Metal Jacket Have you seen that? No no, no. no. You know Oh who, is that the guy who wears, oh, That's no, the that's war film That's a war film right. And it's got um, Good It's fucking epic man Yeah It's fucking epic Right You know who's Who's really a fucking Beast actor um, Who's in that uh, CSI Show with LL um, Cool J no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me get the name. Here. Let me get the name. Um, he's in Men in Black as well. He plays the guy who's oh, skin yeah, the falls old black off guy. him and shit. A- Agent um, Eleven, Johnny what? Knoxville. <laughs> Knoxville's in. Men he in is. Black. He's in one of them. Yeah. That was on Channel Nine again the uh, other night. No, you know what? Yeah. He's he's in that Sugar Water scene. Yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking yeah. about. He's the partner of uh, Will Smith, eh? No, 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 no Tommy guy. Lee. No, oh, no, no. Shout out to this uh, guy. Oh. This guy. <laughs> Oh, that freak. Give me sugar, water. Oh, really? Yeah. I remember that. Give me water, well, yeah. sugar. He gets possessed by the first aliens in Man in Black. What's his yeah. name? Actor. So what movie is this? Full Metal Jacket. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, hang on. T- yeah. <laughs> Rather than go via <laughs> Men yeah, in Men Black, Black. <laughs> <laughs> his obscure alien role, yeah. how about I go with the one that he let's, fucking yeah. stars in? Let's look at a film where he got 90 seconds. <laughs> 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 this, this young Jamie shit is harder than it looks. You're folks. so indie, bro. Shout out, shout out yeah. to Jamie. Man. Where you at, Phil? <laughs> oh, <where>? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Game of Thrones picture. That starts Sun- next week. Monday. Right? Monday. Monday. Yep. Oh, 17, 10. No, Monday. it's Vincent D'Onofrio. Vincent right. D'Onofrio. Shout out, yeah. Vincent. No clue. I, I know who he is, but you'll I know him when you see him. What else has he done? This guy. Oh, he looked yeah. like Mark Ruffalo a bit, eh? Oh man, he's done heaps of yeah, shit. Yeah, he's yeah, done yeah. heaps yeah, of CSI, shit. CSI, that's right. And he's a fucking beast actor, man. Particularly, Bro, he's in the breakup, or he's in the family with uh, Vince Vaughn's family. He's the brother. Like I'm doing the books. Like, oh yeah, that's right. He's in. Uh, that's a funny film, The Breakup, Vince Vaughn. Uh, that is a good movie, actually. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a fan. We're fucking balls deep here at the knockoff. Like. <laughs> Breaking down <laughs> movies. What about yeah, UFC, yeah, bro? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Where, where they at? But full moment jacket. Like, yeah. you got to see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wonder just the, I wonder uh, if Rob Whittaker's seen full. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Rob Whittaker's seen. Where's the segue? At? Looks Mal. like Fatal. <laughs> <laughs> this guy as well. Wait, the guy that plays the army captain in it. Oh, he yeah. has some all time lines. They're doing like this army march through the thing, and he's like, "I don't know what I've been told." <laughs> and it's like Eskimo pussy is real cold. <laughs> like, all, all of this fucking like it's it's such a strange movie. Stanley Kubrick used to do a really odd style of film. Like people was sort of amazed with the way that Quentin Tarantino came out and did Pulp Fiction. Nobody had ever really seen a format like that before, mm. something set up with multiple s- storylines, all kind of intersecting and shit like that. But Yeah, he goes balls deep, he, eh? he borrowed elements from people like Stanley Kubrick who just mixed the style up. And, like, instead of, like, here's your regular narrative where we have, you know, A, B, C, D, it fucking moves from, you know, introduction to characters to here's their conflict, here's the resolution or whatever. And he kind of did these movies in, like, blocks. Wrong orders. And it'd be like full metal jacket you think this movie is going one way for a really long time and then it just switches gears it almost has this fucking a and a b part and it's like just just playing with the genre heaps and i, I don't know that that fucking really gets my dick hard when so it comes <laughs> is it stanley, I, I it is stanley Col- 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 kubrick it, is yeah, he the stanley same guy kubrick. who did that is it space time space Mother? odyssey 2000 Why? everyone always like jizzes over that movie yeah, i think like, it was one of the first to sort of um, use that type explore of the idea of, of ai and of oh. and of um space exploration and that sort of thing and it was it was kind of like 
a real view into the future for its time, you know. It, it was real sort of people like, fuck, can you imagine the future? It was kind of like the first person who'd really come up with a with a crazy picture of the future. But I, I to to I found it hard to watch. Full I, disclosure, like, I haven't watched the full Like film. I watched the first like twenty minutes and it's just yeah. silence. Like probably so quite dated like, now, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well watch the second half of the footy. <laughs> <laughs> UFC two thirteen, man. Holy Ooh. fuck. Robbie Whitaker. We'd we'd be we'd be absolutely remiss. Remiss of us to to not fucking mention that. Like what what are your thoughts and feelings? Like UFC two thirteen, we we were supposed to have uh, Amanda Nunez defending the title, but um, she had to pull out for some a sinus sort of a sinus injury. A sinus injury. She oh, suffered yeah. that from that before, apparently. Hey. Yeah, not not the first time. So a lot of people threw her under the bus, but who knows? Uh, Just a little splash. From you're right, bros. Like yeah. she's come out to fight Holly Holm, well, not Holly Holm, Misha Tate, and Jeez. like Ronda Rousey. All these people, like what? <laughs> She, she, she would have weighed in. She the, would have yeah. fought if she could. She made the weight, of all that sort of stuff. So if she's pulled out, but but they wrong, threw her under the bus. Eh? He, did, he did a little bit. Yeah, never headlining Daniel again. Did? Yeah. yeah, he's like uh, never headlining again. Really? Can't, like, can't trust her. Ooh, doctor right. gave her the all clear. It was a yeah. mental thing. Like, yeah, do- doctor said she could fight. Like, that was where Dana left. What it. about Joanna? <laughs> what a beast calling it up. Yeah, yeah, it would it would have competed. I fucking let it have it. Like the commission should yeah. get that through. If they can, yeah. if that commit, like the sports commissions out there can. Uh, Conduct Mayweather at forty nine and zero versus McGregor at zero and zero in a sanctioned fight. They can let a fucking world champion who's on a ten and zero run at a lighter weight class to fucking fight this girl. It's like, like Ben Ten you know was saying last no. week, man. Yeah, fucking I, Ben I Ten was fighting dude in jeans. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, like at the end of the day, you can, you can get two people into the ring, fucking throw down. And do you know Shevchenko's beat her three times already, Joanna? But ten years ago, kickboxing? ten years Is ago, when right? they were both amateur and yeah, stuff. Yeah, really? wow. Why wouldn't you? Bl- oh, I, w- I wish they, I wish they could. I'm sure. Meet up one time. You didn't though, want to blow their, blow, blow their wad on Joanna. Like yeah. we've got a chance to sell so much more shit if we promo a fight with her. Mm. Then it was this the, card. They probably do a cost benefit analysis on the whole situation, sure. and they're like, you know, they wanted to. It's financially, commission. it's not in our interest to do this. Really, Dana yeah. said he wanted to. I think the UFC wanted to. It might have been the athletic commissions that were like. They needed 72 hours for the drug testing. They said so. Not enough time. Damn. They said if it happened two days earlier or something, it would have been Damn. all good. But look, Rob, Rob Whitaker ended up get, being promoted to the main event and became Australia's and uh, New Zealand as well. A lot of, a lot of Kiwis rep Rob Whitaker as well, oh, I yeah. think. So it's sort of an Anzac Pride thing out here for him. And uh, what a fantastic performance becomes Australia and New Zealand's first belt holder yeah. w- within the UFC and beat a Yoel monster. Romero, who's a monster who's had a lot of success at that weight class, and beat him with. What Joe Rogan harped on about for fucking 25 minutes. He, Joe, I found, was obsessed. Rob hurt his knee in the first round. Yeah. Rogan kept going back to the well for that in, in the commentary a hell of a lot. And uh, afterwards, Rob had come out and sort of confirmed that too. He's like, yeah, it was gone. So w- w- well spotted Joe. I know he harped on about it a lot, but well spotted. And he... Uh, uh, definitely played a factor in that fight. You read definitely. any of the, like, the post-fight interviews with yeah. Robbie and he was saying... I was definitely rattled in those first couple of rounds. I was like, how the fuck am I going to f- be able to finish this fight with, with the way that my knee feels? But full credit to his corner, he, mm. he you know, they said all the right sort of shit to get him in that in that mind frame. And like you said earlier in the week, Briss, he, he's such a coachable dude and the fact that he is so humble and the fact that he is willing to take all that on board, he's, he's so coachable like everybody says and he has fucking crazy, crazy potential. Mm. Rob has grown into his 185-pound physique. I remember when, Yo, he made the, oh, when he made incredible. the move to middleweight and I was like, they're too big for him. They're too big. I thought, I like, I fucking hand on heart, like apologies, Rob, I, I, I doubted the move to, to middleweight, but fuck me, man. Like, he, he looked... Every every bit the opponent of Yoel Romero, who is arguably the fucking biggest freak of nature, the last two physical fights. specimen wise we've ever Ooh. fucking seen. You Even saw his rate. open workouts and shit. Oh. He's a fucking scary dude, yeah. man. To to try and put yourself in the mentality of Rob Whitaker, a dude who's a couple of years younger than us, fucking going in there and throwing like getting locked inside a cage with Yoel Romero. Like yeah. no fucking dude from Sydney thank flying you, over for a blue. I might yeah. I might step in front of a Cobber. moving moving car before I want to do that. You know, like 
you know, at least the car, you know, you can you can prepare Brace for yourself. it. You probably know which way you're going to go. Like, mm. Mm. you can you can try and shield your head from the bitumen. Wh- which would you prefer, getting hit by a car or getting locked in inside a cage with Yol for t- for 25 minutes? And not with just all that. of the different weapons that he's able to sink an elbow into the soft part of your yeah. fucking Me- mentally. Temple. Yeah, mentally, you could brace for a car <laughs> if you know it. Look, he's going to be going 20 kilometers an hour. He's going to hit me. I need to brace. That's something I'd that pr- you would have to yeah. weigh up. You know I'd, what yeah. I mean? That's something that you would have to assess. Like, which would I rather? Like mm. Getting locked in a cage with this guy, or getting hit by a car, yeah. and and <laughs> where you can't where you can't tap to strikes. Yeah, you can't tap to strikes. Imagine and that. That's not you it. Can, you can tap anytime you want, though. Fuck right? Yeah. Verbal tap. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can even tap when you know, they're doing <laughs> yeah. that. So you can you can tap yeah. to strikes, but. And he said that was a pre-existing knee injury he had in camp. And really? Then that yeah. And he said so w- when he got kicked on it, he's like, yeah. "Fuck, y'all yeah. must have known that it was it." And he goes, "And so it just popped back out again, or whatever." He stuffed happened. a lot of takedowns and, on one and, leg. And then the story, like the adversity. Two rounds down, and then to come back. You reckon? Like, oh, I had Rob's four one. Honestly, I, I thought. Yeah, well, yeah. I remember uh, one of them that. was close. You yeah. One of them was sure. close. Yeah, but, it could have been but three I had two. Rob in yeah, front as yeah. Well. yeah. I mean, Obviously, definitely won watching, three four and five. Aussie eyes, I suppose. But yeah, I, I was. But even uh, just thought Rob on the feet is outstanding. And take and down he, the he, he, he can he can sprawl and brawl. Rob, he's like a even injured, one hundred eighty five pound sort of style of a Chuck Liddell. Honestly, he's he's reminding me a bit of Chuck, where he, he'll get after it on the feet. He's not he's not frightened. He'll move move forward mm. when he has to. But he lost. He said he lost a lot of pop off his jab with that leg injury, not being able to yeah. sort of get that pop going. But for a guy to beat Yoel, Yoel Romero on one leg for twenty minutes and just stop, how many takedowns did he stop? A and fucking Chuck Ray a, a before that f- yeah. could be fighter of the year if he you know oh, he's up there. <laughs> Honestly, to, to set if up the fight, Bisping, to set up the fight with Bisping, and he will fight Bisping. in November. I think that you have have to move George. Aside, let George have the winner of Maya v Tyron Woodley. Yeah. If I'm the promoter, that, that's what I'm doing. You reckon? Well, yeah, the interim's done. You have I, to. I'd get uh, I'd, I'd get yeah, Rob I'd, after Bisping. Yeah, I don't see um I don't see a place for GSP in the middleweight division. I think it's already so stacked with killers and sharks that yeah. Get, it, get him back in there for the for the welterweight title. That's his division, rightfully, you know. So, yeah. uh, you know, one would argue if you were, like shout out all our Canadian listeners, fucking. People have been warming that seat for GSP. You know he hasn't lost that title. So mm. I, I say I say get GSP back in at the welterweight. Fit him into mm. the schedule somehow. Make an, an like an entertaining opponent. You know what would be entertaining? It could be a cancel out stylistic wise. But if Damian Meyer gets past Woodley, Woodley, you have a fucking you have basically a grappling match, a wrestler versus a fucking uh, a Brazilian jiu jitsu black belt. Here's one. What a Brazilian jiu jitsu black belt. Here's one for you. At welterweight, Connor's fighting twenty six eight. What is the end of the year at Madison Square Garden? If Connor backs up and fights GSP at one seventy, wonder if Connor would take that. I reckon he would. Wow, and he'd probably ask for thirty million. That's huge. You know actually, I mean? he, he would ask for unprecedented, unprecedented UFC money. I like imagine that. if McGregor stops. Wow, you might have just called it. Here. You heard it here first. If McGregor stops Floyd Mayweather. Comes back to the UFC and says he'll fight St. Pierre at 170 pounds. And we're even to catch. Like yeah, that. you know, like you know what I mean? <laughs> if he said 170 and be, Connor could ask for unprecedented mixed martial arts money. Wow. Go after maybe a 30 million check. And if you're, you're like a young Georgia, Georgia. Make up, and make 150 mil this year. Because he'll make 100, 120 for this. Bout. And, and George has got a fucking huge following. Like Canada behind Again, yeah. you know, like watching cards in Canada and, and that Toronto card where he fought. Who did he fight with that? Jake Shields. Unprecedented. Is it Jake Shields? Yeah, he fought him at uh, the Bell Centre. Mm. 54,000 on something like that that they had there. Would That would be fucking, that would sell some fucking tickets, oh, man. Yeah. Would you rather see Bisping fight GSP, Rob Whitaker or Yoel Romero? Uh, Rob, at this point, you have to sort it out now that Rob yeah. has the belt. You've got yeah. to unify go, go the belt, say. So. The Yoel rivalry and the build-up. That's that good to build for fun. later. That'll Yol be fun. has to take a back seat for now. Yeah, yeah. I think... Uh, you saw the burning of the flag. Uh, oh, the, the, when the he ripped photo. it up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the, the response from Yoel. He got a photo of Bisping and he got his Cuban cigar and he lights the photo and True. the Union Jack and then he lights his cigar with the fire. He's burning of uh, the photo. Oh. Yoel is a fucking different cat, man. He's from a different... Place and time and everything mm. like Cu- Cuba in general is is a very like isolated and unique place oh, yeah. altogether, you know. But um, he's he is a product of that, and he is a fucking strange character, man. You like we we, we did a, a a potty here once where we were watching him fucking bounce around in the gym, just like 
throw and chat at Bisbing, like yeah. trying to get that fight. Hello, Michael Bisbing. <laughs> 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 I love yeah. you. Yeah, I love you. Dairy yeah. fucking like, human oh being. my Don't god. Don't forget Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> classic. <laughs> Did you watch the rest of the card though? Like Travis Brown lost. Um, I didn't actually catch over any more Vadoom. Did you watch that one? Yeah, it was. It was fun fight in yeah. the end day. It yeah. was. It was the rubber match between those guys. It was one all leading into right that call. fight. And uh, oh fuck yeah, it was man. Oh no no no, Overeem won, won that bout. Man, that was. Uh, I had Vadoom there, man. I think that was one all. It was a majority much. decision, though. Yeah, like if you're looking at it a fight of the whole, that's where. And I've, I've said it quite a lot where the 10-point must system is flawed in mixed martial arts to some degree, I feel, where if you're looking at that fight subjectively, Overeem was basically put away, close to being put away in that mm. last round. It might have been one all been in a close fight and then yeah. Fabricio put his statement on it. Mm. Like He's number me. one contender now, Overeem. Ba- uh, Keeps going yeah. up and down. Like. Yeah, it is. So He'll get another shot at Stipe. I don't know, that doesn't get my dick completely rock hard, you know. It was a... I think Stipe could just get it done again. Get Alexis too. Olenek. Is that the guy who beat Travis, Travis Brown? Yeah, even fucking <laughs> dead set. Oh, I'd love to see if... Uh, and, and this is looking That guy looks scary as fuck. He yeah. Russian Russian game, he, he's on the up. He's on the up, absolutely. But I, I would love to see out of the fight that's coming up at the end of this month, maybe the w- either the winner or the loser. I wouldn't mind seeing... Say if Daniel Cormier goes down to John Jones again, I would love to see him fucking grab the mic and call out Stipe. Because he, he could he could cut in line there. Daniel Cormier would be only two losses would ever be to John Jones. Oh yeah, he's had a bunch of success at heavyweight before, beating some strong names there. Mm. If he could go and fight Stipe, massive, eh? That could be massive as well. So fuck some of those promos coming out for the Jones DC. They're embracing his uh, pass. Eh? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. yeah, they're like this is fucking money. This is drama. This is what we thrive on. Mm. It's such a great rivalry. It's my my favourite rivalry in mixed martial arts, pretty much, because it just is genuine hate. They can't be left in the same room together. Yeah, really, really DC. interesting characters, man. John Jones is is a strange customer, and his his major big criticism is the fact that he protests to be this. You know, he's got the Bible verse tattooed across his chest. He's shout he's, out Philippians. You know, yeah. he's really like tries to come across as the family Christian man and all that sort of shit. But his his indiscretions off. You know, out, out outside of his sporting career, leads you to think that he's a bit of a party boy, you know, and he's a bit of a like, you know, the animal that he is in the cage. He's he's got some of that fire in him when it comes to living his life, and he and he's not this like righteous and and straight mm. straight sort of talking guy. He's actually a little bit comes across as manip. I, I don't know if it's necessarily like that in his mind. I think in his mind, he's he's probably thinking my true compass is that I am this. You know, I'm this righteous person yeah. and these are my indiscretions, but this does not define me. But I think to the public, it kind of seems phony. And mm. people people jump on the fact that, you know, like, look at your track record and this is what you're telling us. Just give us the real you, you know. Own it. Be, be that guy. Be the heel, you know. Whereas DC is... From from everything that you see, the actual yeah. exemplification oh, of what Jones mm. protests to be. He's yeah. this family man. He's fucking in Louisiana cooking yeah. barbecues yeah. fucking <laughs> quite Olympian. week for his little kids and Mr. shit like Olympian, that. Mr. Olympian, like... Yeah. He's the good guy, but it's this kind of weird thing with who's actually the the good versus evil in this mm. matchup. You know? the crowd, is it Jones? Yeah. Is it DC? The crowd like we don't Jones, really it seems. They like always boo DC. They love yeah. Jones. Even yeah. though he's done all that bad shit, they just, he's so good. Yeah. He's the greatest of all time yeah, pretty exactly. much. Yeah. That I, people I, forgive I think that. He, I think he is. It's the fight reputation. Yeah. I think Connor has it. Jones has it. Ronda Rousey had it. You know, it's it's when you've got the fucking Adam Pico you've got ha- the walk. The walk Adam. doesn't lie. Then it's like you're legitimized, and people latch onto that hard. You know, if you, if you've got the fucking standing guillotine choke of Lyoto Machida or the way that he put away fucking Shogun Hua when those guys were at the absolute top echelon at of that division. Jones it's at like, 23 bashing Shogun. You don't forget yeah, that shit. 23. You remember those holy moments, shit. you know? You remember watching that card and being like, holy fucking yeah. shit. What about when he dropped Machida just standing? That was just... I know. The, I, I, I'll always remember that. that was Lyoto at that point was mowing through 205. Oh. Oh, I know. Uh, I know. You're asking me about like certain flick passes that Cameron Munster has thrown fucking in, in different games. And my sport recollection is fucking nothing on yours. And but I remember those fucking yeah, moments, Johnny you know. Bones. I remember fucking the standing guillotine choke, and I remember those those big moments. And that's really 
in my view, what I'm in this sport for, you know, and mm. in this sport being a fan sort of thing. Like, but those fucking huge wow moments, like Conor McGregor dropping fucking Jose Aldo in, in 13 oh. seconds or whatever it was, it's like, that's why he is catapulted to this fucking crazy status where you're just like, yes, give yeah. me those moments. Here he is. <laughs> yeah. And do you feel like we've really had many of those moments this year so far? There's been some great fights, but. Like that Gaethje Johnson fight the other uh, on the tough finale was pretty good, but twenty twenty sixteen was a fucking hard year to follow, bro. Exactly. What was that fucking Luke Rockhold card? Weidman one nine nine. Yeah, one nine eight and one nine nine were just one nine seven home runs and two oh one. One nine nine was uh, absolutely fucking ridiculous. Yeah, and it's hard. Like they haven't been putting on the biggest shows this year. That was like two thousand six. Rockhold Bisping two was one nine nine, but the whole main card for that. Card in general. Dominic Cruz, Uri Faber, Max Holloway, Lambus, Henderson. Oh, that was a great Lombard. fight too. Henderson Lombard on that card was oh that oh, that elbow. Dan, yeah. Oh, oh. Dan Dustin Poirier, like Bobby two, Green. Two dudes being knocked out in oh. in the same fight. Brute skis. And one coming back to win. That was a great fight. UFC wow. 201 barn burner as well. Even that Holloway Lambus when he pointed to the ground yeah. like let's fight. Last Poirier, ten seconds. Bobby Green was sick too, wasn't it? Where is that? Bobby Green? He's a gangster, eh? The Diamond won that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. I love Dustin Poirier, mate. That's He's right. They had some good smack talk between Bobby and Dustin, though. Is he out of the fight game, Bobby Green? Uh, he's got a hell of a life outside of the octagon, yeah, I think, yeah. Bobby Green. There's quite a lot of stuff that's happened in his personal life. and um, What do you mean? Uh, his br- brother was murdered in uh, some sort of gangland thing and... Quite, uh, quite caught up. But oh, Sam him, Bedino, him in the Octagon. California. I remember, I remember Brad and I, Knock Off Nation uh, member Brad. He, uh, we watched a fight together with Bobby Green, and he's there like, uh, uh-uh, uh, miss me, miss me, miss me, uh, uh-uh. uh, like shaking his head, doing it. And <laughs> Brad was getting filthy at him. Eh? He wasn't, wasn't, <laughs> wasn't enjoying um, the bunter, and, and not, not that at all, really, to be honest. I'm like, nah, come on, man. Like, he had a loss in uh, April this year. He ha- he did. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, who, who was that? Fox to? 24. Rashid Magomedov. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Coming off three losses. Gee, oh, gee whiz, yeah. T- tough times at Ridgemont High. San Bernardino, shout out. 23 and 8. That's where he's from, eh, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> San Bernardino. Cali. Baby. Going back to Cali. It's crazy. Oh, he's from New Yorker, isn't he? Bobby oh. Green? Uh, oh, yeah, probably. Oh, it's got Redlands, California there. Could be just where he's fighting out of. But could you imagine, like, that, like, having a record? Like, 23 and 8 to us is, like... What are we, episode 34? We feel like we've been doing this for a while, fam, and we've got, like, a, a long ways to go, you know, like 34 episodes. This motherfucker's had more than that in fights, <laughs> you know? It's like, fucking, could you imagine? Yeah. He's probably gone to some tournaments and maybe backed up a few in a night or something. Who knows? Like, And th- and that's probably, that's only the professional record. I mean, imagine how many fights they've had outside of that. Like you were talking to Ben 10 last week and you were saying fighting in on jeans just showing up. Like, that's <laughs> exactly. not on any record. Exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. It's fucking gnarly, man. I've, I've probably been in like, I reckon, five fights in my whole life and they've probably all been... Maybe two in my late teens and, and then Dog shots like on the side or what? three three as a kid, you know? Yeah. And and that's probably a lot for, for your average average sort of person. And that's just, you know, drunk and bullshit. Like three punches and then, you know, somebody hits test. the deck and I walk away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I predict Back, these things. Uh, I remember Back, I got involved yeah. in a fight in uh Catch and fade. in the Fortitude Valley in Brisbane for zero reason at all. Actually, I think I was trying to be altruistic in the situation that I saw this do- dude getting like jumped by a few guys and I actually tried to get in and just stop it and pull pull people apart and then the next thing you know I got don't even know who it was from but got socked in the in the mouth like with a I guess sort of like a low swinging up oh, world, <laughs> world and, uh, star hip hop shit and instantly my top lip, and I've seen it subsequently in, in mixed martial arts, but instantly my top lip just swirled out like a motherfucker. And I remember I was pissed because it was like, you know. You were trying to help someone. I was trying to trying to tune chicks Go at the GPO yeah, as a 21-year-old uh, son. <laughs> 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 Here I am walking around yeah, with this beak mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Off the birdies next. <laughs> <laughs> exactly oh, man, right. 
This ain't gonna do shit. At I got, I got, I got, I got pissed on one time uh, <laughs> trying to trying to get into a club off somebody off the top of the McWhirter's oh. car park, man. Oh, because <laughs> you know how they like had open open grill type. Yeah, 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 I know what you're Marty, talking about. Marty does what I'm talking about. He's standing right with me. I'm there in my best fucking Saturday night. <laughs> kit, oh no! Man. And you're gonna travel <laughs> yeah, far yeah. to get Ready into to the valley. Out, like I've ironed my button up. Yeah. I'm wearing my slickest pair yeah. of snake skins. <laughs> out, out with, outfit worth four fifty. Like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Polar like, bear mink. Spent my whole laborer's check on my outfit. Uh, and um, fuck you, pinstripes. And we're suspended. waiting to get into this club, like walk walking away from this this car park building. And all of a sudden I'm like, I'm getting wet. What the fuck? Are you guys getting wet? And then look up and there's this stream of urine coming down off probably <laughs> like the fourth or fifth <laughs> oh, story no. of the McWhirter's car park. And I'm like, what do I do now? Like I legit just got pissed on. I got some other dude's urine all over me and my outfit. <laughs> Just had to fucking shine it on. Yeah. Look for that golden shower. And just like, all right, let's, let's have a shot. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll spruce my face with a bit of yeah. water, but <laughs> boys, don't tell anyone. <laughs> like a wounded soldier got back in there, man. I reckon you might let's, have been Let's not make through. a big deal of this, boys. I reckon you might have been keen for a knuckle first. <laughs> <laughs> Should we go up there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, gone, I would have been yeah. ropeable. Oh, I would, have been, I would yeah. be ropeable right now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Difference yeah. is at, at 29 years... Of age, I'd probably go home. I'd yeah. probably be like, "Could you ever see yourself man, being that guy?" What the fuck are we doing out anyway? Like, yeah. fuck this. I'm going home. I yeah, just got this, pissed. This on. is Buzz Gillington. <laughs> but <laughs> what if you're the guy doing the pissing? Have you ever been in that spot, just pissing off something? I can empathise. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can be I a can dickhead empathize. sometimes, though. Not onto people unless they asked. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure this dude didn't like. You know, that's some pretty wicked aim if he uh, if he saw me there and aimed up, but. I think it was probably because we wasn't, wasn't even looking and just coincidence. It was like blind. Standing yeah, in the right place. Yeah. On some form of time. narcotics. We've been like, oh. <laughs> in the, that, that strip. Yeah, that, no, no that, that guy, the, the urinator. <laughs> we, don't, we don't know that dude. That man. guy? Yeah. 100%, not yeah. allegedly at all. No, he was. <laughs> under the, he's my under the bus for this <laughs> week. He's my under the bus. <laughs> Fucking hell, mate. Yeah. When was the last time you went out in the Fortitude Valley? Very long time ago, my friend. I've um I've after done the u- your origin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two nights ago, uh, Wednesday night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. I've been out um almost like fly on the wall spec after. I think once was just like a late dinner with drinks, and then the other time was seeing a gig. Seeing um I remember the gig. It was Paul Dempsey at the zoo, and uh, oh. finished up at um finished up at midnight, and then did the walk down Brunswick Street Mall, and. My generation has well and truly passed. Like when I'm walking around, it it looks to me like a a school event mm. with school children that are heavily inebriated on drugs and alcohol, yeah. and um and chicks dressed like absolute porn stars. Like prob- like you know it's the it's the old adage Bob Dylan the times they are changing shit changes, but with this Instagram generation shit, the way that chicks are dressing and the the raunchiness of it all, man, it's it's fucking next level. Yeah. Like it's really next level. And it like I honestly implore anyone who's who's of our demographic, who's fucking a couple of aging old bastards, like if you're in your thirties, fucking hook a hook a late dinner up in the valley with your girlfriend or your friends or something one night and um and just for the sheer circus amusement of it, mm. go be a fly on the wall. It's mm. fucking loose. And if you are a young dude, go and get after it. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's true. But you will you will, in the in the vast majority, at some point, grow out of that. Yeah, so yeah. It just doesn't feel comfortable embrace, there anymore. Embrace it while you can before it's gone. Because it for come. me, if you're the you're the dude that never did that, and then you're 35 years old out there, fucking smashing it, feeling like you're making up for lost time. No. If if you are exactly. a 19, 20 year old, get amongst it while you can, and and then get out of this shit. And yeah, smash if, it. If you're in mm. if you're in your 30s, and you know exactly what I'm talking about, because you go to GPO every Saturday night. Take a good hard look at yourself yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. and reassess some yeah, of your life choices yeah. let's, because let's, your time has passed. Let's wind, <laughs> let's wind it on down a bit. Head oh. to uh, head to bar eleven. That's uh, it's a bit more Classic suited job. for your for your but demographic. Didn't club and feel different when we were living in Whistler? Like it just felt okay. Like you didn't feel old. Everybody was mm. pretty cool. But what then when you the go out here, it does feel <coughs> a yeah. lot different. Like the, the Canadian work the visa, what's, what's the cutoff? It's like 31. 35. Oh, 35? I, I think they, they increased it. Yeah, I believe so. Or well, maybe it is 31. You're probably right. Yeah. So by definition, it's for a young, 
a young sort of demographic, like to be able to enjoy that that situation. Yeah. So I remember there were people that were like pushing that age when we were there, you know. Yeah, I'll shout out Nelson over there, uh, probably listening, 30-something, 30 31 this year. Yeah. Still yeah, over there. True, like true. People stay there and they just live he, that lifestyle. He'd have been there long enough to be able to be a proper resident by now, surely. Yeah, he's got his yeah. residency now. Yeah. A few mates have just that um, stick there, man. Who was the dude that... Uh, Fucking broke his arm real Was badly. I? Oh, red, blue, yeah, red, but blue, red. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the same, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah bluey, bluey. Yeah. yeah, fucking and what a savage. like you tell the story, but did he have like a bone protruding from his arm that he tried to fly home? Yeah, with? so you know those triangle tabletops in, at the park where you like go up and you yeah. sit on it and then the go snowboard down. Snowboard the park, yes. Yeah. So he uh, allegedly in the morning had a few Jack Daniels at the Longhorn shout out, and then <laughs> yeah, best pub in the world. And then you know what goes on on the gondola, I mean gondola, and, he, and then when he hopped <laughs> yeah. down, he might have hit it a bit too fast and then landed actually on his his forearm. And then he looks up at the group and he and <laughs> there's just a bone poking out and he's compound like, compound like full snapped and he like looks at everyone and goes. Looks like I broke it, boys. And then he just oh, grabs it fuck. with his other arm and then just snowballs all the way down there. bleeding and it, or what? No, nah, like it, it was like there was blood. Uh, like by the time he got, d- like when it just happened, it just looked, you could saw the whiteness of the bone. Yeah. But then he just grabbed it straight away. Never seen it. In back. shock. And then he just shot down the mountain. We're like, let's go ski patrol. And he's like, nah. Pointed his nose. And, <laughs> and this is up at the start of Whistler Park, you know, when you just hop off that gondola right at the top. So you still got quite a while to get oh, down. Yeah. And he's like, fuck it. Bombed tw- all the way down. minutes or something. Like. Yeah. And then just just snowboarded his way to the ambulance. You know how there's two that wait down there? And then he's like, yeah, I broke my arm. And Holy then, shit. Yeah. And we had another friend, Walza. He was on the out of, out of bounds first season. Within two weeks, he's trying to do backflips. There was no powder. And then he does a backflip, smashes himself on the um, on the ice and shatters his pelvic bone and snaps his femur. Yeah. And allegedly, uh, he might have been having a few drinks, maybe not. But um, they had to get a... a, a, a a helicopter come take him and then he had to go fly back to Australia to recoup. So. But came back with a walking but red, stick. Yeah. Red Legend. like didn't have didn't have insurance and attempted to well, um, get a flight home to be seen back in Australia. Yeah, you're right. But what Canada BC Health was so good, they were like, you know what? You just Cause, back pay a, us. A girl looked into it for him or something. Yeah, right? exactly. And they yeah. said, you just sign up and back pay us like you're paying forty dollars a month for BC Health from the time you got here and we'll cover you. And they How just, good is that? yeah, they let him sign retrospectively after he injured yeah. himself, so he Shout could be taken Canada. care of. Yeah, good people, mate. Fuck Honestly, enough. what a. But what the doctor a, ended up saying to him that if you had aborted that flight to go home, that you probably would have lost your arm. Yeah, because yeah. he was going to go with it broken. Yeah, mm. with, with, with compound a, with a compound fracture. Full compound with that pressure flying at altitude, it was uh, he could have clotted and lost his arm. Yeah. I watched a thing the other day. Snowboarding two weeks later. <laughs> <laughs> That's animal. A, what an animal. <laughs> More animal than man. <laughs> I watched a thing, uh, it was on at the gym the other day. They always play snowboarding videos and shit like that. There's some fucking extreme footage of dudes doing shit out there. And this maybe wasn't even that extreme, but it was obviously like a park that had, you know, wasn't in season and it was basically just like, looked like a junkyard. So it was like no snow whatsoever, but it was just like the fucking metal metal berms and shit that would have made the half pipe and all these different shit. And they're just charging it on their snowboards and shit oh. like that. Just like as if they're skaters, but sort of just like coasting over the top of all this like jagged metal and concrete <laughs> and shit like that and boosting huge fucking airs and backflips and shit like that. It was dope, man. It was fucking yeah. really, really cool. Man. Sort of this this halfway point between snowboarding and skating, but... Yeah, that lifestyle snarts, man. Yeah, yeah. Dude, Shout out to everybody brother. there, still fucking living, still the, living dream. the dream. In that bubble. Do you reckon the, the population of Whistler in consistently increases? Well, when we were there, I remember stable. the census uh, had come out and it was about 10,500. And Such a small town. 45% was Australian. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Like yeah. It, is, it is a big percentage. But it, it fluctuates because they've West got Australia. like 70,000 to 100,000 rooms I think they said with all the mm. no thirty to fifty thousand rooms, something like that. So you know, some weekends they get all filled up when there's yeah. festivals. So then you know you can have you know sixty thousand people in town. Yeah. What is it about Whistler that like Aussies are just drawn to it? Because it's not close. You always want. It's you not like you have, can argue Bali is like you know it's the closest holiday destination. But what what about Whistler? It's the like, visa situation helps. Yeah. Yeah. Visa situation being being able to find work, and just how well it is set up for. But the gondolas everywhere, you've got two enormous playgrounds where if you are going to go and do two years, it's like, 
let's go out and fucking just see all this shit. It's so easy to get up. It is it's so easy to get down. Adult it's, playground, yeah. It's set up incredibly well where you can just go out and explore on your board all day in and have what a, a re- really, really good conditions as well. And the summer was underrated. Like, oh, River oh, Gold I even, even said... Um, all what, six what, weeks of it. I lo- <laughs> yeah, mate. I loved, um, I loved the like, winter time. And everyone when we first got there was like, you wait till you see the summer times. I'm like, man, I'm an Aussie. Like, I've... I, I know what summers are like. It was unbelievable yeah. that summer there where the ultimate like ultimate playground again just in dry sports, but then you're looking at sunset at like ten thirty at night time and shit. Down and at you're like, age. this is unbelievable. What, ju- so social, that was so, the thing yeah. about it. Like so social, so picturesque. Everywhere you went was just postcard perfect and just it was uh the absolute favourite country I've ever it was visited. Probably my um my biggest experience of like small town vibe as well. Yeah. Like you say, there was ten thousand people there on the census. I mean, what would Brisbane be? Oh, it's a metropolis. Oh, man. A uh, over a mill. Over Easily one point five, yeah. I think. And yeah. and Brisbane at times can feel like a small town vibe, you know, six degrees of separation. It's like, oh, I add this person on Instagram, they're also followed by this person. Because everyone person, stays right? in within like a thirty kilometer radius of their whole life. You know mm. what I mean? You don't yeah. you either live on one side of the river in Brisbane or the other. You're right, you're it right. Really yeah, is. South it's and fun, North. It's eh? funny. It's funny like that. But Whistler definitely has this like, you know, small town vibe where it's like people know each other's drama a little bit and oh, you yeah. see the same people on your on your travels and the underground everybody economy. Know, everybody no, all knows yeah, totally. And everybody all knows the same spots and shit like that. It's not like mm. you know, you're talking to anybody and they can tell you about a new spot. It's who's like, going on to this bar on this night? Okay, we're gonna go to exactly, Gas this night yeah. and then we're gonna Mose the next. Yeah. Then we'll stop in a Longhorn for a couple of well, that night. Exp- explain yeah. that for people that it's, don't yeah. really know what you're it's, saying. It's, it's like simple, locals yeah. night. It There's not simple, enough yeah. people there to fucking to have the every single nightclub packed every single night. So it's it's just a no thing takes a turn. that it's like, you know, Mojo's is a fucking Monday, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's Tuesday yeah. was Max Test, Fish. Test Wednesday yeah, was yeah. Buffalo Bills. Thursday yeah. was Scarfs. Friday was just anywhere Benny because it was in town. Yeah. Saturday was anywhere because anyone would go on turn. Usually Mojo's was busy. Yeah. Then Sunday was a mix between you start at Longhorn then end up at Mojo's. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? word, of, word of mouth like a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Like just, no, no, no. This is where the party's at. How many years in, in total did you do in Whistler, do you reckon, Benny? I was there for about three snow seasons and maybe... Two, three summers, maybe something like that. So I was there for a couple yeah. of years because I would bounce back and forth. Sometimes go to Alberta or somewhere else That's for right. work. Yeah, but like made lifelong friends there and memories. Like uh, we we're talking about the summer. One of my best memories is that River of Golden Dreams that you bought. Ben and I d- like did that in that summer there. Yeah, Remember? just yeah. oh with Kyle yeah, as well. Yeah. It's just magic. Just going down. Like you start in one lake and everyone's in a, in a floatable Explorer two hundred. Some yeah. people can fork yeah. out the cash for a four hundred. Yeah, in fl- inflatable <laughs> oh, boats basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The Seahawk from Walmart was also good. Uh, but yeah, and everyone would just take beers and you know have a good time and go from one lake and it'd take about two and a half hours down to another lake. But the whole time it's just picturesque mountains and. Everyone just laughing. Yeah. It's I was awesome. going through a bad breakup at the time I ended up doing the River of Golden Dreams with my ex at the time. We just had like a huge argument over <laughs> being able to row the boat properly. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just ended up in this stalemate where we're both drifting down a river just fucking hating on each other. Like, oh, yeah, it's a long this is over. This is fucking <laughs> over. <laughs> Hop out at Meadow Parks, the halfway Crawl, stop. <laughs> crawling out with a hole in the boat just fucking, yeah, River of Golden Dreams can suck a fucking in time, dick. Yeah. River okay, nightmares. Yeah. So. Now we've got to catch the bus back home. <laughs> Meadow Park bus. Yeah, now we're going to Tamarisk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, that's right. Oh, good lord, good lord. Man. Different strikes for different oh, folks. Deaf, man. Yeah. Deaf. Everybody's out there living a different experience. All, all part of the fucking journey, man. That's right. All Shout out to you right. still doing it. Yeah, yeah, precisely, <laughs> man. Holy shit, what a place. Uh, it's something about fucking trying to row a boat with a second person. <laughs> I'm obviously a fucking control freak because it's not the only person I've had an argument with no. doing that. One Bryce person should be doing it though, like in those little boats. I know, like, yeah, yeah, yours popped, remember, if Bryce? You're not, if you're not working with each other, it's it's going really frustrating. <laughs> really frustrating. Look, we need to travel three kilometers here, and we're going in a fucking circle. Like, <laughs> remember, yours popped like right at the start. Left side. <laughs> that hard. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. Uh, Don't stop. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're in a fucking it's fucking cold. Here on that. Lord, no, we like that Friday night atmosphere. That fucking that stone hand. That uh, oh, it got to me buzzing. I it peaked. Got me buzzing. Yeah, it's fucking. <laughs> shout out, filthy rich. Shout There's out. some wind assistance. Shout so. out, Jakey. Wonder what happened with the NRL tonight. You know who won? 
Uh, this game's in progress at the moment. Penrith ended up beating the Warriors. Thank oh, you very much. Kidding. 30, 34-22. And, uh, Not off to a good start. Go into uh, Fox Delgado there, Dan. Might com- companion the last like, oh, 10. Giddy up. Look at the Dragons um, winning. Dragons are up over the Raiders, Raiders at the moment. Go you heard you, it here first, go, live. Go, you good things. We're here live at the knockoff on the Friday night. And our digital pass will get some companion. Yeah, into um, Fox Delgado there, bro. Did you see uh, Rob Lidekar on the footy show last night? No. No. What did he say? Uh, Was it one of those awkward fatty interviews where he just asked the worst questions? Yeah, just the ones you'd think he'd ask, but he was doing the quiz with... with, um, Like he's done zero research on, on the guest... Yeah. Shout out Fatty. Oh, and he kind of goes, oh, it's only, he's like, it's only the interim? Like, <laughs> called him out on that. Here's the, uh, the cast. Red V in the Illawarra Steelers throw back. Oh, oh. On kick that to road come. Game. 12-10. Now come it'll be 12 all. Come on the Dragons. Raiders fighting back here. I've got the Raiders here. What's I'm a Dragons fan, but I've tipped the Raiders. Is what it in Canberra? in the other yes. games? Be chilly, eh? 34-22 in the... Uh, Broncos Knights tomorrow, I think. Panthers got the W over the Warriors. <sighs> Spew town. Spew yeah. town. Not a good start. I've, I've just dropped out of the tipping this year. I've, I'll probably come in maybe 13. Just Ooh. Twice I've uh, submitted my tips late, so I got the lowest score of the Ooh, round. That sucks, man. That sucks horrible. when you've just like, you've not even made a crack at it. And, you know? and one was like 5 p.m. to cut off on a Thursday, and yeah. I got it in at 5.01, and they didn't count, and it was a perfect round. Oh, Oof. yeah. That stitch up, you know? Yeah. Explain but to me how this like fantasy works. What's the go with fantasy league? Points according to players' statistics. So each, each statistic is designed a certain amount of points. So if you take a hit up, there's two points. If you make a tackle, there's one point. If you score a try, it's 12. E- each, every single little thing you do, whether it's an error, a try, a 40-20, anything in the game is recorded as a statistic. And you, right. get, you have to pick a uh, squad of maybe 17, 17 players, 20 players, something like that in the, in the team. And, and you get assigned a salary cap. You get assigned a salary cap. And is their price based on those statistics or their actual pays for uh, the no, teams that they represent? On their statistics. So right. So, so it's so not actually aligned with what they get paid. No, no, it, okay. it isn't. So you've got the most expensive players. So you, you have Cameron Smith because he's he's always got good statistics. So he'll have he'll have a value of, say, 500000 So if you want to buy three players of that calibre, you have to throw in a bunch of cheap dudes as well. So you can't just have go in and pick... A state of origin team like you'd have absolutely no right. chance of getting yeah. anything close to that at the start of the season. So you sort of have a, have to mix of rookies and players' prices go up and down based on their performance. Do so you stick with the same team throughout the season? No, you get uh, twenty. Oh, you get thirty trades at the start of a season, perhaps, and you have or may, maybe more, than, maybe forty. Must be brutal around origin time. Yeah, so you get extra in that, but you, you run out of trade, so you can't chop and change your team every, every week, but you can when required. So if you have guys, you could buy a rookie that starts at 122000 you could sell him on for 350000 and go and buy oh, a better so player. They sell him it's it's wheeling and dealing. Oh, okay. Yeah, so okay. You chop and change. It gets addictive, and if, you're, if you are a footy fan and you're not playing, it makes you look at a footy game differently as well. When you're yeah, watching it, you, you're way more mindful of what individual players are doing because you right. own them towards a competition. So, Is it time-consuming? It is. If you, if you want to be good at it, it can be potentially where I put way more time into it last year and had far more success where this year in this league that I'm in, I'm six wins, eight losses. Right. Do you so, eat what you sow, kids? Yeah. So, it's, yeah, but, yeah, six wins, eight losses, at, yeah, at, at this point. So I've got to... Uh, like it's Pick must, it's must, game, must win it? for me, or I'm going to get into the finals. Yeah. How so. many people are you in a competition with, or you just 20. play? Twenty. So it's it's like tipping in that you play in a in a specified group. Yeah. You're, you're, everyone, it's you bunch, get admitted bunch, to that group. Yeah. You just, you create your own league and you invite twenty people in. So I, I, we basically know everyone. 20, it's capped at twenty. Yep. So we basically basically know everyone in this league, and uh, I've got people who haven't played before playing this year who are now addicted to it, love it, yeah, like right. creates a rivalry. They're like, Fuck, is it, oh, a, I watch is it a specific app? Uh, it's just through foxsports.com.au, like their NRL Supercation. You can get an app on the iPhone and oh, the Android okay. too, so okay. chop and change, but it r- really is worth it. It adds a, a different dynamic to watching the game. How much time do you reckon in a week you would spend, not not including sleep, without your phone? Like, would you go... A day, like a day from you know sun up to sundown, on the weekend at any stage without your phone, or you'll no always Sundays. be checking your Maybe phone. Maybe once in twelve months, uh, 
went, yeah. went, went away a weekend, had it, but... Do you still sleep with a podcast in? No. No? No. no I went Gave through, that away? You were yeah, doing that yeah. for a little while, eh? Yeah, w- went through the phase of setting a podcast up for half an hour and going to sleep like that, or the rain, rain, sim- rain, simula- run, yeah. rain simulator yeah, and stuff true. like that. And I still put the rain simulator on sometimes as well, like... Um, I do on planes. I do a bit of yeah. sleep stream, just to, or like at work if yeah. I because at work really yeah because sometimes I like if I listen to a podcast or music at work I like obviously a podcast but especially with music as well I'm one who sort of picks out lyrics and I'll like pay attention to lyrics more so than I'll listen to like the beat of a song or something. It's probably to do with like you know the fact that I play guitar and stuff like that. Yeah. I sort of focus on on different aspects of it more. And that I find is fucking distracting as shit. If you're trying to like write an email or you're trying to do any kind of thing where you're formulating words or something and somebody else is speaking words at you. Mm. So sometimes I'll just pop that sleep stream in and it's just white noise. Yeah. And that helps with sleep or like on a plane if if you, you know I'm trying to get sleep and there's and there's shit going on around. But mm. have you tried that headspace app? No, I did download it at uh, like they've got the free somebody's one on there. suggestion um, because I heard that there was like some guided meditations mm. and shit like the, that. The on Take there. Ten program on there is free, and it's like like I do it on my break at work. Sometimes I just go in a quiet meeting room, and you just put the headphones in, and it's just like it is a guided meditation for ten minutes. But it just gives you if I've got something important coming up, like it just it gets me like so relaxed, and then you just come back out firing like you've given your mind that little break between everything. Right. But even I used to do it in the mornings or And in in like in terms of guided meditation it's saying it's saying things to you or it's like Yeah, so there's a guy's playing voice. some music. They, they have some videos that show you the concept of meditation and how you can be the observer of the traffic in your mind and all that. But then um it, it is a guy's voice and then he's just like telling you to be aware of your surroundings at the start, um, be aware of how your body's feeling and take your mind through your body. But then he goes, take some deep breaths and go through that. And then he just sometimes gives you some time to just... And he goes, now, if your mind's wandered away, keep coming back and just focus on that breath. And then count. Mm. And then partway through it, he goes, okay, count up to 10. With every breath, count up to 10 and then restart it. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, your mind's probably wandered off. But every time yeah. you catch yourself, come back. And then it goes, that's the start, but then it goes through 10 different guides like that right. until it just gets a bit easier and easier it's and like for it's powerful any, yeah for anyone who's who's tried to meditate before it is really hard to like it, i guess it helps if you have somebody guiding you through it and somebody somebody giving you instruction yeah. because i used to roll my eyes at it like oh these it's so easy people, but it's so easy to feel lost in a meditation you're like am i just sitting here am i like what am i actually doing but um a person who i've sort of like for years now actually like shout out Canada when I, I I remember the first time that I discovered Alan Watts on on YouTube oh, yeah and um, awesome and, videos though and basically ever since yeah the the YouTube paradigm of being able to bring people that have passed and their content from like With lectures awesome to the videos. University of California from 1973 or whatever into modern day you With know the music 2015 with somebody cinematic. putting like some some fucking chill step behind it and yeah. shit like that. It is like, although in, in like in reality, I, I've listened to like real long lectures of his, like full length lectures with no music where he's talking to a university of people in the 70s and speaking about all of these concepts and stuff like that and doing like basically guided meditations and shit like that. Fucking. He says it so eloquently, like easy to understand. Eh? It's like just he's like, it's really it's, well with his words. You, and and it, and puts such a perspective on like life. a complex concept. He does it. He expresses it so easily. Yeah, and like like we're talking about with the getting carried away with superstardom and all that sort of shit. It's like this this grounding that he just has this perspective where, fucking, you know, it, you you see everything for what it is. This this game that it all is, you know. And we're all we're all playing this fucking we're all playing this game, and it's like fucking. If you can see through that shit, then then you really see that you know there's nothing to be stressed about. There's you don't be stressed about your job because it doesn't actually it's not actually reality. Yeah. Reality's outside of that. And like you know the if I had a gong, it'd be like that's that's what the Buddhist or the you know Eastern philosophy thing is like when you hit a gong and it's like that Clips. reverberating oh. sound. <laughs> Which is the sound of the Shout om, out Duncan which is the sound of the om, and it's like you know that that in itself is like that's now that's reality. Not all of these thoughts about like what's going to happen tomorrow, what happened yesterday, all of that yeah. sort of shit. 
that like and and I've probably only had like probably I could count the amount of times on one hand that I've had a meditative moment where I felt like oh shit I've just tapped into that little bit of now that like, flow state are you talking yeah, about like, yeah you do it in sports and you don't right. even realize you're right you're right you've probably done it more th- often than you realize exactly exactly like whether it's you know music or golf or fucking whatever it may be like and you get into that little space effortless things just happen yeah it's fucking crazy knock off nation man. where you at baby where, where you, you at? at? Hashtag. Hashtag. You at? Hashtag. We are good. Five how do we get go. this? Um, how do we get this hashtag? Knock off nation cranking. Just hashtag it. Let's start. <laughs> keep building. Everyone, keep the, everyone in this knock off nation, just start getting on that on their uh, on their pics. Let's spread this shit like <laughs> motherfucking McGregor Mayweather like and this wild shit. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> We're going on a press conference. Shout out. Why? Uh, where Weibull. are we at now? What time did we start? About seven seven p.m. I think. I think we uh, probably probably banging on two hours here. Two hours P- probably could yeah. be our, our second longest. Yeah. We might have devolved longest. into it's all some the Friday, son. into some gibberish. I'm not sure. <laughs> nah, we all on some shit. Yeah. But it's Friday. I, t- I just took I'm, a uh, I'm sleeping in tomorrow. I just took that. Oh, yeah. in, just took the uh, Instagram account for the uh, my story up there and the old p- post the picture. I'm looking back and I'm like, geez, that, geez, that looks good. And then old uh, Sonny Wilson in the <laughs> in the building, and I'm like. Hey. Hey, yeah, we'll take that. We'll take that down. <laughs> <laughs> delete, man. So, yeah. uh, uh, shift anyway. delete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sticky, <laughs> sticky keys. All right, fam. We got uh, we got some footy to watch. We got some uh, cold brew to drink. We got Should nothing. I? We got nothing but time and love for everybody that's been listening. It's uh, it's been a hell of a ride. Thirty four episodes in. We're just getting started. We're coming at you with uh, with plenty more content. We've got some more guests on the way too. We've we actually discussed today we need to start a spreadsheet to uh, to gauge some of these guests and and to get a bit of a schedule going. So oh yeah, I do love throwing down on these ones where we just sit around and talk some shit as well. I got to say important, but, uh, important filler. This is how we started. Yeah, this yeah. is how we started too. We're going towards all the killer guest model, no filler though. Yeah, we, we've got guests coming. But we're still right here. We ain't going fucking anywhere. We've been here. <laughs> Jenny from the I block. I can hit you from anywhere. <laughs> McGregor. <laughs> McGregor Mayweather. Holy oh, shit. Stay put. Been. Next episode, we'll probably break down London. Hang in there, Knock Off Nation. If you're still here at this point in this body, this deep, you know, we know you're the fucking ride or dies. OG much, status. Much love. Throw a hashtag See you soon. Benny, up on your Instagram. Uh, LouisBM.com if you want some phone cases, boys. I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. You got any are. shout outs, Benny? Yeah, just Louie, that's L-O-U-I-E-B-M dot com. On Instagram? At Ben B. Jenkins. At and uh, what about, uh, shout out Louie. Sh- Louie the Chow. Louie the Chow. At Louie underscore Chow Chow. At Louie underscore Chow Chow. Call them handsome animal pics. At Stonehand Cold Press. Jakey, get behind the boy. Uber Eats spec for good cold pressed coffee that's going to get you jacked up. No one wants to drink fucking... Hot drinks 24-7. Hit up Jakey. Bring you some nice cold shit. I'm definitely getting me some of that. At the knockoff. At Brycey09. At fucking Danny Spew. At the Nude Abides. (laughs) The Nude Abides is Monty. I've got a uh, I've got a hairless cat now, so he's got an Instagram. Get amongst. And uh, we love you. We fucking love you. Thanks heaps. Bye now. Kaboom.